and hello welcome to solo playthroughs we are going to farmingdale indiana it's indiana right i think it's indiana i don't know wherever we're going it's uh it's freaking awesome i uh i just love this game now i will say i i appreciate people's um opinions about how quickly i can learn a game i, I got more than one indication from <laughs> from uh, fans of this game in uh, in my last playthrough that I should just go ahead and go to level five. Um, no, <laughs> that is that is terrible advice. I uh, I have really taken my time in, uh, in, in getting all of the new ideas and concepts in level two down in my head. I have played tons of games. I have beaten level two once, I think out of like 15 games. And it's just so cool. I have loved learning the new characters. Um, I, I said in the comment today on, on the, it was a Spirit Island video, I think, that there's like no shortcuts for me in how I learn games. Uh, and the best way for me to learn is I dive in and I play and I play and I play and I play with all the characters and I use a lot of randomization as far as my setup. And then I just kind of see things as they play out. And it's fun. That's what's fun for me. So I am not, <laughs> I'm going to take my time with this game. We will have many videos uh, to look forward to of this game. You know, maybe like once every other, every two or three months as I get, you know, I'll come back to it. So we're level two. I am amazed at how much new content they added to it just between level one and level two. And I love it all. It is so, so cool. I mean, I, you can hear the excitement in my voice about this game. Hopefully... I get smashed in it more often than not, uh, and uh, I, I still just love it, and it's it's super fun, it's super engaging, and I love how the stories and the narratives play out that come out of this amazing game. So, a uh, few changes. I have kept the, the camera a little higher. Uh, most of my games, I've been trying to get the camera as low as possible. I feel like this game, it's just better to see more and to see my setup and see what's going on and give me more room to kind of do what I need to do. A lot of tokens. And I think people will know what the tokens are and, and, and getting uh, as close to the action as possible isn't uh, necessary. I did go ahead and I sleeved, uh, or sleeved up. Yeah, I sleeved up my tokens. Now I put some uh, coin capsules on the tokens. I noticed the player action token in particular was starting to wear pretty quick because you obviously use it every turn almost. Uh, actually, not every turn you use it. So, uh, and I just have the other three somewhere in the box. So uh, I figured I'd just sleeve them all up using some extra coin capsules that I have. Then I did go ahead and sleeve up the cards because as you're adding the extra content, obviously you run the risk of the earlier, the content that's used in stage one to start showing more wear than the content used in stage three, you know, uh, for, for example. So I got a bunch of uh, clear sleeves and sleeved this bad boy up. So let's get into it. So um, there are, you know, going to level two, Apocalypse. Uh, there are all the green cards. The cards with the green tag in the top left corner are for level two. So you take all the level two, all level one cards, the blue cards, and all level two, and you shuffle them together. Um, if you are setting the deck right, you should have 27 cards in it by the end. So there are four different end cards, the three from the level one cards, and then the new one that is added for the apocalypse level. I'm going to roll a die, randomize between them. I got a two. I first roll the five. Obviously five is not helpful when there's only four cards. Great. I now I'm going to take the level four cards. So there are six level four cards between the four blue and the two green. I'm going to shuffle these up. We're just taking three after I throw half of them onto the board table for no reason. And uh, board table, what's a board table? A board game table. I'm gonna take three of these out. I'm going to mix in both of the special events. So we have brains and we have, what the heck is that? What is that? You tell me. All right, we're gonna shuffle these five cards up. Put this on, I'm gonna really like it's a bad sign guys i got butterfingers going in all right we're gonna put those five cards on top of the end card now level three we're gonna take the i think there are here one two three, i forget how many there are one two three four five six seven eight nine that makes sense so we're gonna take six of these cards there are nine total between the blues and the greens we're taking six one two three four five six so these three are going to go over there. We're going to take these two brains 
uh, from chapter two, the the two special events from chapter three, I mean, I'm sorry. So brains and where are they all coming from? They both get shuffled in. So this is on the standard setting. If you go into the setup rule book, there is a short game setting and an epic game setting. I'm fine with the standard. Uh, I'm tempted to try the short. I, I do think I was not prepared for the extra length that was added just between level one and level two, because you are adding five more rounds. There are 20 rounds in a, a level, a game of Outbreak, the standard game, and there are 25 rounds if you get all the way through to the end in a game of Apocalypse. And that does add quite a bit of time. But also, the strategies that worked in, in level one might not work so much on level two when you have now five more rounds to survive, five more rounds to make your ammo work, five more rounds to uh, you, you know, uh, fend off the 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 ever the never ending hordes of zombies that just keep aggressively coming toward your town center. All right, so I, there are now eight cards in my hand, and I'm going to take three of them, and I'm going to put the National Guard card on top of that, and then these five will go on top of that. So what that effectively does is it puts the National Guard card, uh, the that's hard to say, the National Guard card uh that's going to be the 10th card up from the bottom so there are nine cards below it it's one of the few things in the rule books that the rule book made very clear and made sure you didn't screw up which i appreciate yes my love for this game is uh is dovetailing between my love for the rule books in this game i i kind of get what they were going for it's insane and i don't think it was executed very well at all uh, and it and it's a little frustrating but this game is worth all the times I have Googled things and all the times I've spent on the BGG forums. All right, cool. So I took the two special events for chapter two. So one is blue, one is green. I, I don't know which is which. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna take, this is four, five, six for me. So I'm gonna take that one and then I'm gonna shuffle that together with eight of these chapter two cards. Now, the I think the long game uses both of the special events. So this is the only special event among the blue and green decks that you actually take out and, and you're only using one of the two again. So I'm going to take eight of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's left over four. Those go out of the game. This gets shuffled then. I actually think the green one is a little easier uh, the blue one adds the green one's like a traditional brains card. So it could, you know, if you're not careful, you're too close. Uh, it could lead to some really epic badness. Uh, but the blue one's the one that adds a new Z unit to every, every track. And that could be really, really hard to deal with in a way. So, and now we have, there's 10 level uh, chapter one cards. I'm going to take these chapter cards. I'm going to shuffle them and we only get three. So it makes the, the first three rounds very different from game to game. Cool. So I take these three and in total, again, we should have 27 cards here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Seven more. One, two, three, six, seven. Look at me. Greg passed math, kids. He can count to a hundred even. Hey, Greg here. It's that time again. It's my, my third. Thank you to a patron who has supported this channel long enough and a level high enough to get one of these fancy dancy shout outs in the middle of my video jim you're the man jim i am really thankful for your support of this channel the jim is all the way from indiana so maybe he saw me rescue farmingdale and he was motivated and he's like dude i need to help this guy fight off the zombies in farmingdale i don't know farmingdale isn't probably definitely in indiana it just feels like it should be in indiana to me that's a Philly guy talking, so what the heck do I know? But what is the support for my patrons go to? Well, look, it <laughs> gives me a little something for my time. This this channel takes a lot of time, and I love it. I'm not complaining, but it does take a lot of time, right? But it also goes to help me improve the quality of the product that I'm bringing. In recent months, I have gotten a better microphone. I've gotten a pop shelf with this microphone. I am looking at an even better microphone right now there my amazon cart is full with things that i'm taking a look at as i want to continue to incrementally improve the quality of what i do i'm looking at a better camera right because it's time to get a camera and if i get a second camera that will give me some flexibility with what i can do with my live playthroughs way in the distance we might be looking at 
potentially getting some editing software that I can have two cameras in all my playthroughs. I have a new light here. What's this light going to do? Well, if you notice my Maze Night videos, the cars are a little dark. This light's going to be behind me. It's going to light up the hand uh, of, of cards that are in my hand so people can see and have a better viewing experience. I'm basking in the light of a photography light box uh, that has drastically improved the lighting uh, in my videos. So look, if you go in my old videos to now, you will see what this money has gone to help pay for as I have built this channel and invested in this channel. I'm going to keep doing that. So if you want to be like Jim and help support this channel, please go to my Patreon page. The link is below. See if there's a, a support level that makes sense for you. But if not, that's totally cool. Just continue to watch these videos, likes, comments, all of that really helps as I continue to make solo playthroughs the channel that I hope it will continue to grow to be. And now let's get back to the action. Thanks again, Jim. All right, we're going to take the event, the fate cards, which there are a ton more fate cards that were added in the apocalypse level, and you will see them often. Yes, yes, you will. Uh, <laughs> you will be uh, doing this infection rate thing like crazy. Now let's set everything else up. So you see my, I actually wrote on the bags, guys. Isn't that fancy? That's beautiful. All right, we're going to take some regular Zeds. We're going to put a... They're going to like 35, I think, when you have the expansion content. You just throw, I think you have three extras. You just throw them in. So we're going to set these up. We have a level six Zeds to, on the start space of the suburbs track. We have a level six Zeds on the start base of a forest track. Can I get a level two? Can I get a two? Give me a two. Um, what do we got? Oh, it's a level six, six, six. Oh, dude, I should just shut this thing down right now. It's a level five. I mean, it wasn't a six. I guess there's that. So we're going to put these guys. What are these tokens? I don't know. They look like civilians, but they're not because they don't, they're not armed at all. They're just a bunch of uh, dudes. Looks like an old dude with a cane. I don't know. Some stuff going on there. So look, these are defiant, defiant, defiant villagers. And I'm going to put them. Where did the, where did the villagers go? Well, they go in the village, silly. All right, cool. Now, uh, there's another one here. So all the villagers start with one of those and we'll see how those mechanics play out. Now we have our civilians. So villages, vill villagers are not civilians and vice versa. Villagers become refugees. Civilians become wounded and dead. So they're yeah, a big difference. So I'm going to roll a eight sided die. So again, there's, there's four, there's four twos, two threes and a four. Uh, you're supposed to randomly place them. So I rolled that. That's a three. So we get a two there. I'm going to roll a six sided die for the rest of them. I rolled a two. So none of my threes or fours are out. This is bad. <laughs> oh, this is really bad. Come on. Give me my four. All right. There's my four. And now one, two, three, four, five, six. And we got a three. Oh, what did I do? Ding. I always go in that order. Dang, and I might get all of them. Give me a four, five, or six. Yes. All right, the two is out. I always go this way, so I just I keep forgetting about Beauville for whatever reason. But that's fine. Hope my, I, uh, I have nothing against Beauville. I really don't. It's a lovely place. Lovely, lovely place. There's a great diner. Get a nice little chicken pot pie. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Obviously not in the middle of a uh, zombie apocalypse. But, um, you know, it is what it is. We're going to put this here and this here. Somebody's watching this and be like, wow, this guy's really strange. Yes. Yes. Welcome to my world, everyone. We are going to now have to take two more things. We need our heroic civilian unit and we need our civilians. I'm going to roll this. So to the right of me off camera, I have the uh, Farmingdale Police Department Riot Squad. I have the Farmingdale Furies. I have the Savior Corps. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's something. Yes, I did play an entire playthrough of this game and I said, save your corpse because I am a terrible person. Uh, clearly, that's one of those words that I should have known, and I I, I don't know. It put it, Again, in Seventh Continent, it was a foliage instead of foliage, and now it is corpse instead of core. My friend Dave uh, is, uh, is has made fun of me mercilessly about that, and uh, Dave, I, I assure you, uh, it is now forever ingrained in me that it is Savior Core, 
Thank you very much. All right, so I have to save your core. I have checkmates, which I actually have never played. So of course I'm going to roll the four just to make my life nice and difficult as I try to learn that on the fly for y'all. The VFW local, the uh, fire department auxiliaries, and Bob Bowers crew, and I roll a. F I did roll a four, didn't I? That's amazing. Oh, <laughs> all right, checkmates. Here we go. Cool. So checkmates, heroic civilians. They have this little handy dandy token. And it doesn't it look like an action token? Well, yes, it does. There's a certain thing that's going to happen that I'm sure I'm going to screw up because I haven't ever done it before. But this is why we play to learn. And we get our handy dandy heroic civilians thing. So this heroic civilians are kind of a wuss. Uh, they are 1-1. One, one. However, but wait, there's more. Abilities. They're strategists. They're chess players, kids. Come on. Uh, at the start of each action phase, roll a die. If the result is greater... Then the number of events received this turn gain one additional event action. So if the result is greater than the number of event actions, so you take an event card, if it says two, you roll a die. If it's greater than two, you get an additional one. That could be huge, even if that increases the number of event actions past four. Great. And to remember this, you would put this on there to say, oh, we got one more event. Let's use it. So that's a cool little thing. Uh, hopefully I won't forget that more than once because I assure you I will forget it at least once. And then the Ruse de Jeu. I don't know what that is. It's it's French, obviously. It's Vive la France. All right. Each refugee's unit in the refugee camp increases the unit's full strength side by plus one and reduced strength side by plus a half. Round it down. As new people join a club with a mind to fight the Zeds. So getting refugee units. Normally I don't really care about those as much but if we can get refugee units in the camp it will actually help make the checkmates into potentially a, a bit of a force by the end so that's a strategy i'm gonna have to experiment with so experiment with in real time for all you wonderful people all right i'm going to roll a die i have a 12-sided die here and the heroes in front of me there are 12 i do have all the expansions that have been released for this game so Left to right, top to bottom, I have, so one's going to be Rusty Staub, two will be El Toro Loco, uh, three will be Mrs. May Hauser, four is going to be Pickles, the dog, uh, five will be Bouncing Betty, six will be Mr. Johnson, seven will be Captain Piazza, eight will be General Lee, nine will be May Hernandez, ten will be Sheriff Hunt, and uh, eleven will be Colonel Kingman, and twelve will be Deputy Schmidt. Um, and as I take them out, the numbers are just going to shrink, so I'm not going to, like, those aren't their assigned numbers. We could be rolling forever. I'm only rolling this four times. We'll get what we get. So I rolled an eight. We got General Lee the horse, which I don't hate. I, I just don't want, I don't like when I get the horse and the dog. Uh, I just find that it's not, that's not enough of what I need. But General Lee is pretty cool. So it has the ability that it can carry one non-mounted human or primate hero at a time uh, so whenever the thoroughbred move whenever i'm sorry whenever the the horse moves it can basically carry that's why it's bigger it can carry a hero on top of it which is pretty cool it's actually like almost two move actions in one and additionally it has thoroughbred it is one free move action uh each action phase so you can place a thoroughbred marker on discard to keep track of it one of the greatest things about that with the six movement is that you can move a wounded hero from one of the tracks into the hospital almost guaranteed every time and that really helps um in a lot of ways additionally uh any hero stacked for general league gets plus one strength in combat uh, and when the combat happens you don't you don't increase the infection level because clearly horses are immune to the infection from these crazy zombies horse sense this unit has no rider it cannot voluntarily enter it cannot voluntarily enter a chaos or tunnel space well if you don't know this game that well yet and you only saw it from my first playthrough what's a chaos marker oh you will learn young padawan it's nuts all right a horse is a horse it never the unit never increases infection when attacking or defending in hand-to-hand -hand combat but it also cannot build barricades what's a barricade oh more to learn uh, it cannot restore order or and it cannot make arrests and one nice feature is run flicka run the unit and its rider can choose to retreat before being attacked in hand-to-hand -hand combat very cool unit all right now i'm rolling so everything that was above general lee has shifted down so there's only 11 if i roll a 12 it's not going to count i rolled a nine so number nine is sheriff hunt really like that hunt's uh leadership action can come in very handy it's just that extra extra in every round 
And we will put him there. And we'll, eh, we'll put him on the horse for now. Why not? There are only 10 left. I rolled a one. Rusty. Oh, that makes me happy. I love this dude. Love, love this dude. All right. So, uh, Sheriff Hunt. I won't focus on if you... I'm not going to focus on the level one units, but the, the level two units I'll kind of go through a little bit. Uh, Rusty is a survivalist. When he does a forward action, he gains a supply. A supply. I'm really struggling. A supply unit, uh, a supply in addition to the results. So if I do a forage action, I roll, I rolled a one, but I still get an extra supply, which is very, very nice. comes in really uh, big when you have like a unit that can do some healing um, and things like that, but obviously we don't yet. Uh, he has he has a crossbow. His first gunfire attack each turn costs zero ammo, but it still costs an action. And then lucky, when you make a saving roll, you can roll two dice instead of one. Rugged, so you have the tough ability for Sheriff Hunt and also like Deputy Schmidt, where they if they get a damage, you can try to negate if you roll a four, five, or six. Of course, I'm just getting all the ones out of my system now. Uh, with Rusty, it's a similar mechanic, but instead of tough, he's only rugged. I guess tough is better than rugged because rugged, you need to roll a five or a six to cancel that hit. Ferocious, when his when he's injured. So when he's on his injured side, you will uh, actually, instead of having a four combat, you will have a five combat, but because he's injured, he can't pull on that crossbow as well. So his uh, his ammo, his, his gunfire attack goes from a five, I'm sorry, a four down to a two, which is no bueno. All right, last but not least, there's a lot of these units I would not mind having right now. I just really don't want the dog <laughs> or the mayor. Oh, I, I, whatever. It may be fine. No dog. I rolled an eight. So eight is going to be Colonel Kingman. Oh, I like that. Like that a lot. All right. What do we got with Mr. Kingman? All right. Oh, the Colonel. Mr. is, is probably rude. We got to show more respect to this dude. So he, uh, he probably doesn't want to be called it like a dude either. All right. We have a couple of things. Defensive parameter or perimeter. If the Zed unit or Zed mob moves into a space on or adjacent to Colonel Kingman, you roll a die five or six. You cancel that move. That could come in huge. If you're on a hot streak with high numbers, it is so nice. I mean, Colonel Kingman like single handedly could shut down a, a track just with a, a nice little streak of fives and sixes. Whenever he is defending, he gets plus one on the, he gets a plus one shift on this, uh, on the hand to hand combat chart. A st strong point once per game is an action for three supplies. He can build a strong point in a space that he occupies. Now you get a terrain shift of three and the strong point never goes away. All right. Why is that a big deal? Well, you have these other things. They're slightly different on the top but they're, they're pretty much, they look identical in some ways, but they're, they, the artwork's a little different, but, okay, so this is a plus two terrain shift, and that's a barricade. You can build that with any player by spending two supplies, and it gives a plus two terrain shift, but if a Zed unit ever leaves a place with a barricade, the barricade is destroyed. The strong point, not so much. Never, ever, 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 ever destroyed. It is always going to last as soon as you build it, so you really want to be strategic where you build it. Additionally, he can build a minefield. I have taken to the strategy of just building the minefield in a strong point early in the game and putting them in the same place. Um, whether that's right or wrong, I don't know. It's uh, it's worked well for me at, at times. Uh, but what's the minefield? So the first, when the minefield is on the board, the first time a Zed unit enters that space, uh, you are going to do a gunfire attack of a seven before any hand-to-hand -hand combat. Then it flips over to its small side. Uh, a four, which is still pretty solid. And the next time as that unit enters the space, either by retreating or entering, you do a gunfire attack of a four, and then you proceed to combat. Now, if I have Colonel Kingman here, I can do defensive perimeter. I can do a whole bunch of stuff. I can have this. I can have the gunfire attack from the mine. And then I do a hand-to-hand -hand combat with a plus three terrain shift. There's a lot of cool things. Now, terrain shifts are it's important to remember that terrain shifts cannot stack. Other kinds of shifts can stack. So if you had like Deputy Schmidt, you know, martial art, or not martial arts, his Eagle Scout training, he gets a plus one. Uh, so he can get a, or even Kingman. Kingman has a hunger now. So if he's defending, he gets the plus one. And then in addition, he can get a terrain shift. But if I put the strong point on the suspension bridge uh, spot, that's not going to be a terrain shift of a four. I choose my best terrain shift. So that at this point would be a terrain shift of a three. 
All right, so the both the strong point and the barriers count as terrain shifts. So that's a pretty cool um, array of uh, of uh, heroes here. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm uh, cautiously optimistic, is what I am. Although I don't like the six, I don't know why I did a little Sean Connery there, but that's fine. Uh, six 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 five. I'm going to yeah. That makes me a little nervous. Mm, the four against the six is eh. We got some, eh, none of it's great. So I'm going to roll these two dice to get my initial supplies and ammo. I rolled, I get a five with the lowest number being a one. So my supplies are five supplies and my ammo is six minus the one. So five ammo. So a nice uh, equal opportunity roll there. None of my units give me any additional stuff. So I think think we're ready the order game is set let's pull event card number one what do we have bam all right supply room discovered oh and what i don't know what i was doing before when i said you go from 20 rounds to 25 rounds again you and that was a 20 percent no no, no. I, my math is right but it's 20 to 27 rounds so like it really is almost another third of a game i mean i guess it I guess it's closer to another uh, another quarter of a game but uh yeah it's a it's a it's a lot of extra game when you're going from level one to level two if you're staying on the standard mode all right four r so i think i said in my first playthrough that four i thought was co-op uh, competitive game no 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 i was very wrong four r is for a solo game all those ideas are introduced into this playthrough so it'll be again apocalypse level level two this is where we start caring about the four r phase on a card what is the four r's well the r's stand for various units the units are the raiders the rangers the refugees and the rescuers we will not have to worry about the rescuers for a while we will not have to worry about the raiders for a while we might be able to worry about the rangers and about you know somewhere in chapter two the refugees will probably be the first of those that we worry about and this number only corresponds to refugees. So this would be how many refugees units that we can move. However, we have no refugees on the board yet because all of these stubborn villages, villagers are being a little bit defiant. It's what they do. So that is that. Now we're gonna go to the, so we can skip the four R phase and do nothing. Infection phase, nope. Eat phase, I'd have to roll. I have no units in the hospital. I have no refugees in the refugee camp, so we do not have to eat. Oh yeah, that's another rule that you have to learn in this phase is that uh, when you doing, we have to roll during the eighth phase, uh, you have to count these units as well as these units. So obviously that, um, our desire to get a bunch of refugees in the camp will help with the checkmates out, make them more powerful. But the, corres the corresponding um, result of that will be that during the eighth phase, we're more likely to be losing supplies because we're, our rolls are gonna have to be higher and higher there. All right, that's fine. Zed's phase. The Zeds are activating two tracks. They're activating the highway track. Those guys go there and they're activating the mountain track. They go there. Action phase. At the end of this phase, plus four supplies. If a player unit is in the mall district, place the goodies marker in the space as a reminder. Event actions. There are two. Cool. Don't forget at the start of the event action phase, I get to roll and it has to be greater, not greater than equal to, it has to be greater. So I get a three or more, I got a six, look at me, I get plus one action already. You checkmates, you're so clever, I love you. All right, let's, uh, let's figure out what we wanna do here. I'm going to use Sheriff Hunt's leadership to send these little civilians into the mall district so I can get those, oh, I forgot to put the goodies marker out. I want to get those plus four supplies. That will be good. I'm going to let's just do a whole bunch of crazy things this first <laughs> this first turn. Why the heck not? So I'm going to spend the thoroughbred action, and uh, thoroughbred is going to carry Colonel Kingman because who else belongs on this horse? One, two, three, four, five, six. That will be good. I'm going to then. Yeah, let's try to make a a big time. Uh, I don't want to do that. See, because the chaos markers are a concern. Like, if you can really cordon off um, a uh, space there, it's really nice. It's really, really nice. One, two, three, four, five. 
I'm wondering if I've been using Colonel Kingman's thing wrong. Now I'm kind of looking at this, but it's uh, it's really nice when it works out. That will do it. So I'm going to spend a uh, player action and three supplies, one, two, three, to put the strong point there. I'm just going to try to block off the mount, the forest track this turn. Oh, you know what? I can't do that. Because if I'm pulling things on, they're going to be before that. That's Yeah, that's probably where I've been getting messed up there. Let me rethink this a little bit. All right, so I'm taking that back. I'm taking these supplies back. I promise I'm going to get this. We're going to uh, get that back too. Ninja bug. That might not be the worst idea. We'll, we'll change. We're going to change the strategy a little bit. We're going to put him over here. And then we're going to do with thoroughbred and then we're going to do the three supplies and put the strong point here. All right. I like that a little bit better. Now we have uh, th three actions here. I'm going to take this action off the table and I'm going to forage with our pal Rusty. He gets a six. Nice. So he succeeds. He gets an ammo because we're in town center. What do we get for when we get a six more foraging in the town center? In addition, he gets at supply, which is cool. So that did the trick. I'm going to do an event action. I'm going to move Rusty. Where is going to need some help? Uh, Subber Shack going to need some help. That There's two civilian units and two of them that's a that's a lot of badness that could happen there so if he's going to move four one two three four try to give some assistance over here in the suburbs and then with my final action i'm going to i will forge again with him he is in another named space so sure or I could just do this as a final action. I'm going to place the mine and I'm going to spend two supplies and an ammo. It's a little, I'm sure like some people don't, I like getting those out and just picking a spot and that's going to be super strong and we'll see how it goes. Um, I just like doing it early instead of trying to do it late. Then I don't have the supplies and it's like, an, I, I've already committed the supplies to it. Everything makes more sense to me now. And then we'll we'll kind of figure out the rest of it. All right. So because between the defensive perimeter now and the stronghold and that minefield, you know, we should be able to hold cordon off the, the highway track for a little bit to come here. So uh, end of the action phase. Since we at the end of the phase, we did have a player unit in the mall district. We get four more supplies and then we're back to five and five. And uh, that's that's cool. So uh, housekeeping, everything was slipped back over. We're going to discard that next event and infected water supply Four R raiders, rangers, refugees, rescuers. None of them are on the board. We're good. Infection. We have to roll our infection levels at a zero. We're good. Eat. We have no units in a refugee camp. We have no units in a hospital. We're good. We now go to the Zed's phase at the beginning of this phase, roll a die. I rolled, I got a five. <laughs> All right, so I have to take that many losses in either supply points here, or I can take them in hits to player units. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to give four hits to a player unit. Bye-bye, this guy. I'm not doing a saving roll. Now, again, one of the things that I, I wish to... So I did four hits to that unit, and I'm just going to take lose one supply. Um, one of the things I was a little frustrated with, with the rule book is it, 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 that a lot of times when the, the rules talk about saving rules, it makes it sound like it's mandatory. You, it's totally not. And if you go to the, one of these five rule books, again, it's like rule six, three under there. It makes it very clear that saving rules are, are pretty much always optional. Uh, and they're usually not in your best interest to do, especially if you start getting refugees on the board, but why the heck am I going to want to save this now if i save you know this civilians unit great i could maybe start lowering the infection rate by spending actions to heal but you don't have that many actions to be like healing a, a, a garbage unit anyway that's pretty much just going to be fodder for the the zombies anyway so um i think that made a lot of sense happy to do that and now we are going to uh so that was the beginning of the phase now we have to carry out the zed's movement actions 
So the Zeds activate on the mountain. This defiant marker goes away. It's going to be a nice little test for us. Nice and early. It is Zed's advantage. However, the terrain shift still applies. It becomes equal to, please, my strongest civilians, show us what you got. I rolled a six. Oh, that was bad. All right, so I roll. I get one damage on the Zeds. The Zeds wins. That's two damage on the level four civilians. The defiant. Uh, villagers now become fleeing refugees and we get our first chaos marker so chaos markers we have 10 of them it is not enough i want 15. <laughs> so especially there's one one event that that can almost put make you put double out during that round that's really brutal so what are the chaos markers mean so whenever a zed unit controls a space at the end of a movement so even if they're going to move again, you put a chaos marker and, and the chaos marker affects what you can do as a player unit for the rest of, of the game until you restore order, which you do in the housekeeping phase. But when you restore order, it's also going to require the infection level to be increased. So again, it's one of the reasons I really want to try to cordon off one of these tracks because then it can really help make the 10 supply that we have a lot more manageable. If you ever have to place a chaos marker and you do not have any more, Clearly, Farmingdale has just plummeted into chaos, and you are done. So, so it's one. Uh, it's the way I've lost the most, uh, for sure. So that activation was done. That was a really disappointing roll by the, my my best uh, my best uh, units there, but that's fine. And now we are going to activate the forest track, and that will go there. So, not sure how I want to deal with that just yet, but we will have to figure it out. So, event phase. We have two event actions. Whoa, checkmates. They rolled a five. There we go. Another event action. Thank you, checkmates. And now we go to the rest of this. I'm going to... I think... I mean, I just... They're just garbage up there. One, two, three, four... Let's try this. So I'm going to move with this player action token I go one, two, three, four. I'm going to do a gun. Remember he can make a gunfire attack from two spaces away. He just loses one strength. So he's going to make a gunfire attack of a four that will use a bullet. Uh, and that's going to also use this action. All right. So I'm going to attack with a four. I roll the seven. That is two damage. That's all I wanted to do was flip these dudes. It's a three. Um, so we get two damage. So this, this damage marker comes away. And that does give these civilians a little bit of a chance to, to do something. I'm going to use leadership now because I can use this on a civilian or a refugees unit. I can give them one action if they're on my space or a space adjacent to me. And I'm going to make them forage in the Lucky Strike Mine. They rolled a four. A four in the Lucky Strike Mine is nice because that does give us another ammo. So I got my ammo back as part of... If this was like... Sometimes some of these sixes are like a five on the other side. I might have actually used that action to move that unit out of there. But I kind of like how that played out. I don't know what i want to do i'm going to use an action on rusty and i will i mean the checkmates are kind of garbage until i get some refugees in camp i'm not going to use thoroughbred i like uh yeah, I don't know if Thurber is going to be that helpful right now. That's the thing. You get the horse is nice, but again, when you're only looking at three characters, it's like it just doesn't feel like enough, uh, you know, compared to a normal game when you have like four human characters. But again, if you start taking some damage, the thoroughbred can be really, really handy. Actually, let me get the thoroughbred out of there and maybe make him more, put him in a place where it might be more useful. So I'm going to do that with his action because horses always have ability to run. So he's going to move six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to try to get him over there with help out with Rusty in the suburbs because the suburbs are always a problem. And then I'm going to use my last action to forage with Rusty. He rolls, it's a four, so he gets a, it's a name space. He gets a supply and then because he's Rusty and awesome, he gets another supply. So housekeeping, this all flips. Uh, one thing I didn't do when that fight happened, the infection level should have gone up. 
Sorry about that. And now we shall move on. Event Bing. Okay, so yeah, I guess those Zeds in the mountain got a taste for blood and, and now they want the brains, so they're back. All right. So we got some time before we have to worry about that. So let's move, people. Yeah, the, th the theme, the thematic stuff that comes out of these cards, is it's so clever. Uh, and it's, you know, as I've been learning the mechanics, it's been fun to, now that I get them down more and more, to like really start to appreciate like the story that's being told. It's just so cool. Anyway, four are. Raiders, Rangers, Refugees. We do have one refugee on the board. If I had two, I can move both. Since I only have one, I'm going to move these closer to town center to try to get them in the refugee camp so they can help out our boys, the uh, the checkmates, because everyone likes the chess club. Of course, that's how that goes. All right, now we're going to do infection phase. No, we don't have to do anything. Eat phase. Don't have to roll because uh, we don't. We're not going to roll. <laughs> we're not going to roll a zero or less. I'm not that unlucky. And now we can activate uh, the Zeds in, this, in the movement phase. We're activating the Zeds in the forest. And we're activating the Zeds in the mountain. So they're going to the mine. Infection level goes up to two. It is now a Zeds advantage. It becomes equal to because there is a terrain shift on the mine. Come on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I rolled a four, which is garbage. Uh, so I did zero damage. Uh, another chaos marker. Sheriff Hunt, save us. And I'm going to do a saving roll just because they're my level four units and they're awesome. I rolled a five. Infection level goes up. We will put you in the hospitale. Bam. Interesting. Well, that wasn't great. So... We now have the, at the beginning of this phase, the pressure event. So there's the, the Z, there's two kinds of Z's. One's a, a movement pressure event. One's a placement pressure event. They only are in like in two hands. If you're playing and you have multiple player actions. So if you're playing with two players or three players uh, in a solo game, you just ignore it, which is, which is good. Uh, so during this phase, all move actions that begin in town center are free. Well, I have no, well, you know, we'll see. I don't think that's going to be happening, but that's fine. Uh, we have four event actions. Can I roll a five or a six with the checkmates? I do. I have so many actions, kids. It's amazing. Cool. That makes me happy. So we are going to attack. We need my first action. I'm going to use an ammo. I'm attacking with a five. Nope, that's not what I use. I'm attacking with a five with the sheriff. I would love an eight or better. Eight or better. I got a nine. Cool. Three damage. That's great. You are super dead. And nope, oh, that's the wrong bag. That goes there. Cool. I'm going to use an action to move Sheriff Hunt one, two, three, four back to town center. He's going to use his leadership to command the civilians unit to heal. Infection level goes down. He's, he's really powerful, that sheriff. I mean, so I'm going to basically have him chill there for a little bit so he can fix that because uh, that would be nice. All right, now I'm going to use a checkmates. All move actions that begin in the town center are free. So they have a move of three. One, two, three. That was free because of that. And then they are gonna, I'm going to use this action, and they're going to move again. And they're going to stay there. Now they can't move any further. They can't do any actions there because they are now in a place with the chaos marker. But we're going to try to restore some order. That is right, folks. We are restoring order in a very real way. All right. Now, what am I doing? I'm going to use a thoroughbred. Nope. Cool. I'm going to use... Oh, that's a little crazy. I think this makes some sense. I'm going to use this action to move Rusty Stob there. I'm going to use Thoroughbred. Go one, two, three, four, five, six. That will give me the, act, the option to retreat uh, if the suburbs track is, is activated, which I would want to do. I'm going to use this action to get Rusty Stob's first gunfire attack does not take any ammo, so he's attacking with a four against those oh you can't shoot into the start space i lied you cannot shoot into the start space start space is a 
large amount. So I don't even know what that roll was. Uh, so yeah, that was that was silly. Yeah, you can't shoot into the start space. So one, two, three, four. Uh, and, and you can't like shoot, sometimes you'll have a, a hero in the star space. They can't shoot out of the star space. The star space is like this huge amorphous land. You could actually have a hero and a Zed in the star space and that's fine. They can coexist there. So yeah, sorry. Glad I remembered that rule. Um, every once in a while, I have these moments of pure genius. All right. <laughs> I don't know about that, but right. And actually I should have one action back as well. Cause I, was at three and I went down to one because I did a move with Rusty and then a shot, but obviously all of that made zero sense. Zero senso. Oh, what do I want to do? I think I'm going to use, I'm going to use thoroughbred to move into town center. And remember all move actions that begin at town center are free. So we're going to take advantage of that again. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to do a gunfire attack with the sheriff. It takes another ammo. I know I'm using a lot of ammo early. Nine or better would be amazing. Oh, God. Asking you shall receive. I mean, I did roll like absolute garbage in those hand-to-hands -hand over there. So this is kind of nice. I remember I couldn't just keep healing that unit because you can only use one heal action a turn uh, on, on a unit. You Because healing is slow, kids. So that's beautiful. I'm very happy about what happened there. I'm going to Rusty is in a named space. I might just forge forge and hopefully get a six here. I mean, I'm going to need to get some of these ammos, some of these am, am some of this ammo back. Some of these ammos is not really a sentence I should be saying. Cool. So I'm going to do first forge action I'm with Rusty. He rolls a two, so he fails, but he does get a supply because he's a survivalist and he's going to do it again. He gets a five, so that's a supply and then another supply. One of the things you could be thinking about as these supplies really start building up is maybe putting some barricades out as units start to kind of condense toward the center, um, but we'll see how that plays out. Cool. We're going to do some housekeeping. So I'm going to refresh all of my action tokens, and then I'm going to take this off the board and we have restored order in the mine, which is exactly what we need to do. Cool event. Next one round four brains. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> that was quick. Uh, we have a brains event right off the bat in chapter two. I actually don't hate that. Conduct this special turn only. There's a pressure event we could ignore. The affection level goes up by three. One, two, three. Great. All tracks activate with each Z unit advancing one space only. So fast units would only advance one space only and stuff like that, which is nice. However, if a Z unit activation results in a combat that it wins, it immediately advances again. And then that's it. We just go on to the next thing. So actually, again, I do prefer the, the one, the green uh, special event than the blue one. I just think it makes things a little bit more manageable early. Could be wrong about that because brains can be pretty brutal, but I tend to never be in a place where brains hurts me that much this early in the game. All right, so activating all the tracks, I'm gonna activate the suburbs track, done. Activating the forest track goes in here. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, infection level stays the same because I'm defending, which the sheriff, and the sheriff's on a freaking horse, and that horse is amazing. General Lee is amazing. So uh, now the sheriff also has his strength increased to a six because he's on a horse. So it is human times two, and then we get a plus one terrain shift. So human times three, bam, I roll a six. That is three damage. So the Z unit is dead and I am tough. So I'm going to try to cancel the one damage to me. I rolled a two, I fell. Big failure. All right, that's fine. We'll be able to use the horse to kind of heal that up. Uh, we're going to activate the mountain track. There are no Zeds there, so we actually have to add a Zed unit. And that goes there. And now the highway track activates. It's going to try to move into a space adjacent to Colonel Kingman. What does he do? He rolls a one, so his offensive perimeter is garbage. This comes in, this defiant marker goes away. We do increase the infection level. It is a Zed's advantage becomes an equal to. I rolled a seven. That is a player win. So that's two damage to the Zed's unit. 
and a retreat, and then two damage to our player unit. So all in all, that was a pretty nice special event brains card. Not much that went very badly. Um, yeah, can't really complain about that. We're good. The only thing that would have been better if I had rolled that defensive unit, but at least we got two damage on that unit there. And we're going to go on to the next event. What do we got? So now we know the next eight cards are not special events. They're all going to be chapter two events. And it's, it's really, you know, we should be in a decent spot for the next few rounds. Yeah, cool. All right, so for our Raiders, Rangers, Refugees, Refugees is number two. We have one refugee unit, so he's going to move ever onward towards town center. And then uh, infection phase. So we get to, so re rescuers, we move up to the infection phase. Infection levels at a seven. We need to roll an eight or better. We have an outbreak. Uh, we rolled a nine. Nice. Eat. We have no, we have one unit in the hospital, so I need to roll a two or better. I rolled a two. Not, you just don't want to show off. You just want to just kind of get it done, guys. All right. The At the beginning of the next phase, the Zed's phase, we get plus one per Zed's unit on the forest track. There are zero. So that would have been plus one to the affection level. We just killed that sucker because Sheriff Hunt's amazing. So then we have to place a new Zed unit on the forest track start space. Defending units received no terrain shift this phase, which is fine because we're just activating the forest track. And that dude goes there. Event phase we get two event action and not event phase what is it uh, action phase so two event actions i'm going to roll for the checkmates i rolled a four so we get another action man these checkmates are awesome <laughs> really good um and that's fine all right so thoroughbred is going to move one two three four five six moves into the hospital drops off sheriff hunt then he just goes in the town center because he is an awesome dutiful horse that i love dearly all right i'm going to spend a player action to do a healing action on sheriff hunt which reduces the infection level and then we can move him back to town center he's going to use his leadership ability to heal the civilians again that reduces the infection level again so that's a nice little combo we are going to do this i'm going to use the checkmates action to do a gunfire attack with rusty against this dead unit that doesn't re require an ammo he rolls an eight it's two damage on this guy i think i want to get that to the reduced side uh, i mean i'm going through ammo quick i know it but I think it makes sense. Let's do it again. We're using an ammo. Level four. Gunfire attack. I rolled a four. Of course I did. <coughs> that was a bad roll. That was a bad roll. Yeah, I don't want to use my... I have two bullets left. So... What if they come in? I got to do it. Oh, man. This is rough. The checkmate's just chilling up there. Yeah, because I want to get Rusty out of here into a place where he's going to be more useful. So, ammo, action, please roll higher than a four. Seven, great. Two damage to this edge unit. He flips, he's a three, which is great. Um, so he had two damage on him. So he goes to his, his uh, damage side and gets a damage marker with just one wound. So he's two, but this Zed unit is two away from death. So if I get Rusty out of here, you know, we can just try to see what happens with this defiant uh, uh, civilian. But I, I obviously, both of those, both of these tracks are now kind of pretty vulnerable uh, up there. So we go to the uh, housekeeping phase. Bing, bing. One thing I thought about was moving the checkmates here to kind of try to restore order there. It just didn't make any sense. I mean, that's going to be Zed's controlled. It, it just it is what it is it just didn't make any sense to try to to do that uh with where things are currently at all right so housekeeping phase is done we go to the next event going through this deck like with a quickness kids all right standing strongest when standing alone so this is a weird event in a solo game because it doesn't do anything it's just two pressure events and you're like oh with the bifty but that's fine i'll take an easy turn every now and again so we have four r a Raiders, Rangers, Refugees, one, so these guys can keep doing their march toward town center. 
and rescuers we don't have to worry about that infection phase no eat no uh game don't do the pressure event so we're activating the highway track defensive perimeter come on oh fails again <laughs> what the heck dude all right so hand-to-hand -hand combat is happening in ingeberg uh infection level goes up to a six we're doing a zeds times two it becomes zeds advantage because of the terrain shift Ugh. i rolled a six which is garbage that's one damage to the zeds at least they flip and three damage to the player unit uh i'm not going to try to save these civilians it's just i already got something going on if i get refugees i can equip them it just doesn't make any sense so they go straight to the graveyard bye all right and that gets a chaos marker oh and then these defiant refugees the defiant villagers become fleeing refugees great and now we activate the suburbs track do i want to defend with rusty probably not yeah i really don't want to defend with rusty it's not worth the risk for him getting dinged up so this comes here hand-to-hand -hand combat the suburb the infection level goes to a seven this defiant marker goes away i mean that was the whole point of me using so much ammo to get this to reduce size so i can def i could defend this with the civilians um so the civilians are the ones fighting i already did that so it's a uh, zed's advantage it becomes equal to because of the terrain shift a big roll here would be very very nice uh how about a four <laughs> glad i didn't use rusty all right so no damage to this unit three damage to the civilians they retreat rusty retreats the defiant villagers become fleeing refugees and we get another chaos marker here yikes so we'll see kind of going through civilians like a, with a quickness we're gonna have two event actions in the event phase or in the action phase i'm going to roll for the checkmates i roll the six they're so amazing <laughs> this is actually really bananas all right rusty's gonna take a gunshot with a with his free ammo and hopefully i get a seven or better we got a six just to make things really annoyingly unfortunately not great but that's fine i'm not gonna i'm gonna trust these guys to do that last damage and uh rusty's gonna get the heck out of there so we're gonna use this checkmates action rusty's gonna move a four one two three and four yowza so yeah we're gonna do the leadership we're gonna do a heal action infection level goes down yeah i want to keep sheriff hunt where he is for one more turn um yeah i could uh try to get another barricade i don't hate that I have the supplies for it i'm not going to be doing any forwarding if i do that but that's fine man that that mine's gonna be wasted on that measly unit because like my defensive parameter has been garbage so both of, yeah both of these were formed this turn I'm trying to think of where these refugees were but if yeah this was the only refugee i had on the board going into this turn so now i got three refugees racing to the camp to try to make the checkmates into a seven seven no actually they'd max out at a, at a six six which is fine all right um so i'm gonna do two more actions i'm gonna do one i'm gonna move these guys here and then another one i'm gonna spend two supplies and put a barrier here so again it's a barrier the strong points here barrier there but uh these civilians can pretty much just chill there the rest of the game until they're needed near the end which they invariably will be needed that is all right housekeeping how are we on chaos i just have that chaos and that chaos and that chaos so we got seven more left yeah i really wish these guys were dead but that's fine this is gonna go here next event is high mountain night assault so for our raiders rangers refugees but it's a zero so none of my refugees can move and rescuers rescuers are on the board infection level i'm gonna roll i need a seven or higher i rolled a five we have our first outbreak bam six goes down to one we pull a fate card player's choice so i put a regular zed unit on player's choice Yowza. where's my choice i think my choice is ingeberg 
right? It makes better use of a couple of things that are happening right there. I don't want to put it on St. Thomas. I don't want to put it on Beauville. I don't want to put it on Lefty's Pass, especially when the mountain track is going to be activating this turn. So Ingeberg gets a level five unit and that's fine. So uh, we go to the eat phase. I don't have to worry about eat. Oh, I have one unit in the hospital. I rolled, it's a two, we're good. Get don't show off. Uh, at the beginning of the Z phase, plus one for every unit, every Z unit on the mountain track. That's one. We put another regular units on the mountain track start space. And then, so it gets a nice little Zed's mob there. And then we, oh, I didn't do the plot twist. Sorry about that. So uh, Farmingdale's controller, John Stangle, discovers resources are missing. I have to roll for supplies. I rolled a five. I lose a point of supplies and I have to roll for ammo. I rolled a three, I have to lose a point of ammo. So I am out of ammo. That's great. <laughs> okay. Uh, I might try to get um, Rusty up there and start doing some serious uh, foraging. But we'll see. Um, so yeah, I added that already and then the, the uh, mountain track activates. That's uh, fine. And this can go up there. Mountain track activated. And now we go to the action phase. One event action. I need, all right, cool. I get another action. Man, checkmates are great. And now we can go to the actions themselves. So I'm gonna use the leadership ability. Infection level goes down. We do the final heal on these guys. Welcome to the game. They're gonna take a, so you do have to have a point of movement to get into the hospital from town center, but once you're healed, you can get discharged into the town center as just like a free thing that happens, which is nice. Um, I don't know if I totally understand why the distinction is there, but I really like it. <laughs> Anything this game will give you to make things easier, I will be a giant fan of. So that is done. I'm going to use a thoroughbred to move sheriff hunt into the lucky strike mine yeah i mean i'm, I'm not that desperate for supplies i mean one idea would be get the rusty up there but rusty probably should get to a place where he can start using his free gunfire attack so i'm going to use uh, this player action to try to get rusty into a more useful spot um yeah, one, two, three, four. Am I worried about this yet? No. Not really. I just need a defensive perimeter thing to start triggering. I'm going to do a forge action with Sheriff Hunt in the Lucky Strike Mine. I rolled a one. That's awesome. Doing a forage, forage action with Sheriff Hunt in the Lucky Strike Mine. Six, two ammo. That was a clutch, clutch roll. And that's fine. I will take that. I will take a one six <laughs> any day of the week there. That's fine. Um, so we're going to do uh, housekeeping. This goes away. And then we draw the next card. Bam. A hero arrives. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Four R. Uh, raiders, rangers, refugees, and two. So I can move two of my refugees one space closer to home. I'm gonna to try to get these guy out of these guys out of harm's way uh, because I don't want them to be devoured by Zeds. So if you have, if you're on the refugee side, if if you're basically if a turn if a Zed's movement ends before or after a combat and the, the Zed's movement is on the same space as a refugee side of one of these villagers tokens, uh, the thing is just devoured and it, the infection level goes up too and it's really bad. All right, we're now going to do the infection phase. My infection level is only at a one because I kept doing all the healing with the sheriff, which is really nice. So I don't have to worry about that. Uh, eating, I don't have anything to worry about rolling there. Zed, Zagged activate on the forest track. They activate on the suburbs track. Infection level goes up. It is Zed's times three, but the terrain shift that makes it Zed's times two. Uh, an eight or better would be nice just to kill this dude. Oh, a 10. Boom. <laughs> yes. All right. These guys go down in a blaze of glory because they did a 10. They kill the Zeds. Two damage to them. The civilians are dead. I'm not doing a saving roll. Well done. Thank you for your bravery. And we, you will be remembered fondly. That is amazing. Cool. So that, that looks really nice. 
And now the highway track, they're going to try to move into the Colonel's Stronghold. Can he roll a five or a six this time? No. <laughs> All right. He's not, not rolling. His defensive parameter is not very defensive or parameter -y. So what happens first? The minefield triggers. We're doing a gunfire attack seven. All right. Bam. We rolled an eight. What's that going to do? Well, that's going to give us three damage. Oh, um, this should go up again. Right. That's going to give us... No, we're not... That's going to go up in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So it went up a little bit. So we're doing the gunfire attack. I rolled an eight. I need three damage. I'm going to kill this guy because I'm going to make the math better uh, for the hand-to-hand -hand that's about to happen. So I killed these Zeds of the Zeds mob. And now we have hand-to-hand -hand combat. I already raised the infection level. Uh, it is... He's hunkering down. So he's defending. It is Zeds have advantage, but... It's a shift because, again, Colonel Kingman's hunkering down. And then it's times uh, three more shifts, and we do get terrain shifts. There's three more shifts because of the stronghold, so it's human times three. The Colonel is a beast. So you see like why I like putting that minefield and the stronghold together. It can be really, really nice. Uh, what do we get? Oh, five damage. <laughs> That's ridiculous uh yeah five damage I rolled a 12 i haven't rolled a 12 in like seven games <laughs> it was really nice um so five damage the the key thing though is i don't want to waste that mine on him but i probably will end up doing that but that's that's totally fine but yeah so you know the colonel plus the strongholds combined is a four shift no matter how you cut it it just makes him pretty bananas all right, now what? Uh, action phase. At the beginning of this phase, place a new random available unit in either town center or any start space. So, where are my units? All right, let's remember. Let's re uh, let's refresh. We have El Toro Loco, Mrs. May Hauser, Pickles, Bouncing Betty, Mr. Johnson, Captain Piazza, Mayor Hernandez, and Deputy Schmidt. I, I should roll an eight-sided die because there were only eight left. I rolled a one. El Toro Loco. Oh, I love this dude. He's uh, he's wicked cool i'm gonna put him on the start space of the highway track <laughs> for a very specific reason uh and and we'll see how that plays out for me cool uh, i have two event actions i'm rolling because of checkmates oh they they failed failures <laughs> that was the first time i think of the extra action from them so i guess i can't be too upset there now el toro loco what are you doing so he's gonna move He's going to the here. Chaos, infection level goes up. Now, um, no, it might not go up. We'll see. What's going on is uh, when you, when you, the chaos markers mean you can't do anything, but if you move into a space with a chaos marker, you, you can carry out the attack like normal, the, the, the hand to hand combat like normal, and then you're kind of stuck for the rest of the turn. But El Toro Loco has this thing. If I roll a four, five, or a six, it's not hand to hand combat, and the Zed suffers the damage and is out and i don't have to worry about him like triggering that mine i really want to save that mine for something a little bit stronger four five or six and i rolled a three all right i failed that hand-to-hand -hand combat's going to pursue it can ensue like normal uh and it's going to be a six to a two so it's human times three i did raise the infection level and i rolled an eight that's fine this dude is dead the hard way and then i'll be able to restore order at the end so the only thing that really changed was the uh, infection level went up a little bit more than is ideal all right so we have uh two event actions left and a bunch of other stuff going on what is happening so this is pretty much the only thing i'm concerned about right now which is nuts it's nuts it's gonna get crazy soon enough trust me on that one but let's, uh, yeah, this game can turn on you so, so quick. It's so nuts. So Toro Loco is cool. One of the reasons I like him is that, again, he's not doing gunfire attacks, really. I mean, he can, but it's like half of his other strength. So it's a 6-3 on this on this side, 4-2 on the other side. Um, you saw his ability with the bull's charge. Um, obviously, I failed, but if had I succeeded, the Zed's mob would have suffered a hit and moved back, but obviously it would have been dead at that point. And then the nice thing about him is he's just like the civilians and the heroic civilians in that it takes two damage to flip him and not just the one. So he's a little bit more um, likely to stick around. Uh, so yeah, that was a nice little get with with that roll. And then now with 
General Lee. I mean, this is a really, really nice combo of stuff. Um, doesn't mean I'm going to win, but it's a, it's a nice combo of things. Let's uh, let's take advantage of Rusty's ability. So I'm going to use this action to go here. And then we're going to use another action to use that free gunfire attack of his. So he's attacking with a four. I rolled a six. So that's one damage. And the nice thing about having a unit there is I can not, I could again use them. He's like kind of like a body shield and not have to worry about Rusty getting banged up a little bit. Uh, and then with, I have leadership. I'm going to command the heroic civilians, the checkmates to do a forward action in the mine. They rolled a three. Failures. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to, do I want the thoroughbred to come back with me? Oh, thoroughbreds fine where they are, man. We're good. All right, we're going to do some housekeeping. El Toro Loco comes in and restores some order right off the bat. Uh, and that makes the infection rate go up because, of course, it does. This goes away. Next event card is Suburbs Night Assault. Dun, dun, dun. So 4R, Raiders, Rangers. Uh, none of those are on the board. Uh, refugees, but it's a zero, so we don't do anything there. Rescuers. All right. Infection phase. We have to roll. I need higher than a five. I roll the seven. Eat. I lose one supply because it just says one. Zeds. At the beginning of this phase, plus one per Z unit on the suburb strike. That is zero because these awesome guys went down with a blaze of glory. Uh, and now we place a new Z unit on the suburb strike. Defending units, units, defending units receive no terrain shifts. That's fine. And then we activate the suburbs track. Two event actions. Checkmates. There we go. They're back. They're back, kids. Can't hold the chess nerds down for too long. That's what I've always said. Man, we have gone through zero fade cards. <laughs> it's very weird. Um, great. What am I doing? I don't know. I'm going to use leadership for the forward action and the lucky strike mine. Because that's what I need to do. It's a four. We get one ammo. Makes me happy. Mm. Okay. I'm going to use Thoroughbred to move Sheriff Hunt into Lefty's Pass. Now, he wouldn't go there without a, a hero on him because of the Chaos Marker, but he will go there as long as the hero is guiding him, giving him strength. And again, I can if these guys come into attack, I can retreat. So that's not that bad. Um, I think I try to cut down that mob, and I also have so I basically have four actions where I can. I don't want to use all my bullets, but we'll see. We'll see. So I'm going to use this player action with the free gunfire attack with Rusty Stab. I would like a seven or better. I rolled a two. Is that a seven or better? That is not. All right. <laughs> Jesus. Um, is that that is not a seven or better? So. Uh, <laughs> It was close. It was really close. I'm going to use the checkmates action to use an ammo to do a gunfire attack of a five with Sheriff Hunt. Now, again, I could have just left him in Lucky Strike Mine and fire from two away. I really want to make every bullet count right now. Just the five or the four is an, actually a pretty big difference uh, as far as the damage done. And again, with the horse, I can always retreat and I could still command the checkmates from an adjacent space if, if these guys don't move for a while. Plus, I get the restore order. So there's a lot of reasons why that made some sense. I rolled a four. <laughs> so I rolled a two and a four. This is some strong rolling, kids. I'm going to use an action and an ammo. I have one left. After this, uh, another gunfire attack of a five. I rolled a seven. That's better. So these guys are now flipped. Oh, one. Oh, that's really nice, actually. That makes that whole mob a whole lot less scary. A whole lot less scary. All right, I'm going to forge with Rusty in the in St. Thomas. I rolled a four. That's going to be two supplies. Cool. Cool, cool. Cannot complain about that. I would have liked to have rolled a little bit better. But being the fact that I was a one on the injured side, uh, that, that, that's great. Great. Speaking of great, what is going on? We're going to do our housekeeping. We have restored order there. That does increase the infection mark, the level. And now we have nine chaos markers left, which is really nice. This goes here. We pull an event card. What is it? Utter chaos. 
Uh, yeah, this is the card that that tends to screw me. Uh, that's not that's not good. Yeah, I really hate this card. All right, four. Um, Raiders, Rangers, Refugees. Refugees is one, so I can move one of these things one. Uh, sure, we'll try to get those guys in the refugee camp, I guess. Uh, that's fine. And Rescuer is not here. Uh, in infection phase, I need higher than a six. I got a seven. Again, don't show off. Eat one. Great. At the beginning of this phase, each name space that becomes Zed's control, this town receives two chaos markers instead of one. You can only remove one a turn, as usual, during the housekeeping phase. This can really swing a game. Really, really can. All right. So I'm activating where? The forest. I think I defend with the defiance anyway, with the the, the, the civilians anyway. Oh, I don't like this. Don't like it one bit. Because I mean, effectively, I could now. This one's already Zed's controlled, so that doesn't apply. Um, again, it has a Zed marker, but if I lose these two battles, we're talking four chaos markers. And all of a sudden, my nice little cushion is uh, no more a cushion. All right, I really don't want Rusty to get injured for a lot of reasons. So I'm going to activate the forest track. That goes there. I'm going to defend with the civilians. So all the defiant banners are out. Chaos, or uh, infection level goes up. It is Zed's times two, because it's a five to a two. It becomes Zed's advantage because of the range shift. We are rolling higher than an eight, please. I rolled a six. So it's one damage to the Zeds. So it actually flips that to two, a two damage marker. And three damage to the civilians. They flip one. The uh, villagers are now refugees. Rusty goes back and we get two chaos markers because of utter chaos. That was still the right call. Yeah, that was a six where I still would have lost at an equal to, which is the best I could have done. So that was still the right call. I could kill them with Rusty and then kind of go back and, and try to uh, restore some order there. Obviously, restoring order means faction level raises, but it's still worth it. So suburbs track, this dude just moves here. And now the mountain track, this is going to go here. Now, it doesn't increase the infection level because the sheriff is on a horse. It is a 5 to a 5. However, again, he's on a horse, so now he's a 6. So it is human advantage. It becomes human times 2 because of the terrain shift in Lefty's Pass. And he can re-roll if he rolls like garbage because he has martial arts training. I rolled a 3. Thank God for the re-roll. Wow, I rolled a 4. <laughs> That's amazing. I still win. <laughs> So two damage, they retreat. Two damage to Sheriff Hunt. Um, he is tough, though. He rolls a four. He cancels the first one. He rolls a two, so he only cancels one of the two. Garbage. <laughs> what just happened? Okay, and that's it. So event phase, we get three event actions. Uh, checkmates roll. Uh, does not get the additional checkmates action. Six. Ah, yowza. Always stuff to think about. All right, so Rusty's going to do a free, his free, uh, free ammo gunfire attack of a four. And he gets a six. I'm just rolling like garbage with my gunfire. That flips. Oh, it's a four on the other side. <laughs> okay, it's a little not great. Sheriff Hunt's going to use his leadership to make the checkmates forge in Lucky Strike Mine. They roll a five. That is an ammo. You know, this, this suburbs is totally undefended right now, and that's like chaos, chaos. I mean, the chaos can really start adding up pretty quick here. But I think we'll be okay. I do want to flip those guys. So I'm going to use a bullet, do a gunfire attack of a three. I just need a five or a better... I rolled a nine. That's the kind of roll I wanted before. So that's two damage that flips this guy and puts a one there. So that's actually a really nice battle. 
even if he's on his wounded side and I can use that tough ability. It's a little risky. I don't want to use, I don't want to lose Sheriff Hunt, but at some point you got to figure out when you want to take your risks here. Or I, I do have the lucky. Yeah. Right, let me get, let me get Sheriff Hunt healed up. So a thoroughbred's going to move. He's, he's going six, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to, mm -mm -mm. don't know what to do. I'm going to move Sheriff Hunt into the hospital. I'm going to spend another action to heal him. Infection level goes down. He's back. And then we're going to, we're going to, I kind of want to shoot at these guys, but it's, there's really no point there. We're going to forge on the farm with Rusty. I rolled a one. It just gets me a supply because he is a survivalist. All right. Housekeeping. These ready. This goes away. It was utter chaos. So how many of these? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's two more. I, I saw a thread where it's like, is it cheating to count how many cards are in the event? I'm like, whatever, man. <laughs> okay. I'm going to count. I have two more chapter twos. That is what it is. I could just like mark it on my arm. What's the difference? I don't know. Four. Uh, raiders, Rangers, Refugees. I'm going to move this guy because I for a couple of reasons. Uh, and Rescuers. Fine. If I move this guy in, infection level goes up, and then I it's just that much more likely I get an outbreak, which I really don't want. But I still in infection phase and need to roll higher than a six. I rolled a two. <laughs> I rolled a two. It goes out to a four. Fate draw. Ah, oh, it's a bad one. <laughs> it's not good. All right. So I put a regular Zeds in the town in the mountain. Ah, oh, it's really not good. And then. Uh, play this card. St. Thomas Historic Graveyard burst open with undead. Place two regular Zed units as a Zed mob on St. Thomas Village space. The first one's going to go there, and the second one, because of the stacking limit, is actually going to have to be one back, and glad we got the stronger one in the back. Ugh, that was a bad two. Alright, eat. I have no one in the hospital, no refugees in the camp, so that's fine. And now we go to the Zed's phase. At the beginning of this phase, make a fate draw. Another, can I get a play this? Yes! Yes, hold for later. Play it to a Zed unit that attacks and wins. Change the combat result to one hit in the attacking Zed's. And the Zed's retreat. Cool. All right, so I place a new fetid unit. Fetid. I don't know. A new Zed's unit. I don't know. Fetid. I guess they are fetid. Uh, Zed's unit on the start space of the fated track, which is Highway. So we get a four there. That's nice. Uh, during this turn, for each regular civilian's unit eliminated or sent to the hospital after a saving roll, place a new Zed unit on the space where it was killed. Oh, that super applies for these guys. And I don't like that one bit. Yowza. Woo, things can change quick in this game. That is for sure. All right, highway track is activating. Forest track activates twice. <laughs> wow. If it's activating once, I might actually use this grim determination right away. Um, the problem is, if, so if this dude's killed, we, uh, we put another Z unit there. And then it activates again. <laughs> Yikes. My hand-to-hand -hand with Rusty is kind of bad, though. All right. I think I let that thing die anyway. And then I use this to save Rusty, because I really can't afford to lose Rusty. I mean, this is a great card to hold on to late, but it's also a really great card to get on, get on top of some things early. And his ability to use ammo for free, I don't have another unit that does that. And clearly, I'm going to need some help in that track. So... Yeah, I don't, I don't see another way here. So I've already activated the highway track. We're activating this track. This comes in. Infection level goes up. I'm defending with these, these civilians. It is definitely Zed's times three. 
Uh, oh, it shifts. It's Dead Slime 2. I, it's definitely not Dead Slime 3. Terrain shift. What am I doing? I could... It, well, yeah, it's dying no matter what I do. I rolled a 4. <laughs> so, yeah, it's super dead. I'm not doing a saving roll. It can join its friends. But, remember, because of the event, I have to put a new... So, this goes here. I have to put a new... Oh, if we get another Chaos Marker there. And I have to put a new Z unit where the civilian unit died. But stacking limit's going to apply, so the new Z unit is going to go here instead. This unit's going to also activate. Now, we activate again. It is against Rusty. It is Z times two. I can't afford. Oh, what 11. It's still two damage to Rusty. That's just a waste of an 11. Uh, no, I'm going to play that Grim Determination, last stand, these guys go back and take one damage. Yeah, and um, before I forget too, like that hand, there were two hand hand combats that actually got up to a six. Oh, that was such a garbage roll, man. <laughs> Everything changed. There is some nice, again, because when they activate it, they can't move, they can't move. There is, there is something nice to kind of bottle necking one of the tracks. Um. Yeah, we'll see. And I, by saving these these refugees, we were able to. Uh, well, hold on one sec. I'm not sure I saved those refugees. Oh, yeah. So I I misspoke. So actually, when we were here, the the. Uh, Rusty retreated when the civilians went to battle and lost, but the the refugees actually never retreat, so they actually did get devoured. And when they get devoured, the infection level goes up to uh, up two more. And I'm I'm not making a saving roll for them either. So you always, I mean, the, the argument to make a saving roll for, for them is to get them into the refugee camp. Uh, which could help could really help the checkmates ah oh, fine i'll make a saving roll for the refugees i rolled the one anyway so they're super dead <laughs> that's great um so yeah we get we get plus two there because they were devoured i don't know how they're being devoured means that we're now more infected but i guess their devouring was so vicious that just parts of their entrails just ended up all over the the known universe of farmingdale um so this is that reminder token has served its purpose Wow, that Grim Determination was a, a good card to get at that time, for sure. Okay, event actions. We get three. We're going to do the checkmates roll. They roll the four. I will take one extra action. Thank you. Please and thank you. Oh, what do I want to do? I have one bullet, which is not enough bullets. I mean, I, this highway track, I'm still sitting there with El Toro Loco just like, just kind of doing nothing. And I can pick him up with the horse. Which I don't. I don't hate that idea. This is probably gonna get to crap for a little bit. So thoroughbred is gonna go give General Lee the ability to go and hang out with our friend El Toro Loco, which I like. Uh, leadership. I'm gonna make the civilians forage in town center. They roll the one. My forage abilities are amazing. We're gonna use the, the this player action to do the free gunfire attack with Rusty, who I desperately needed to save for this very reason. He rolls a 10. I love you, Rusty. So he has three damage uh, that kills this guy, puts one damage on him. That's better. Then before, do I want to use my last ammo with him? Uh, probably not. Uh, I don't want him to get out of there. I mean, he, he's not in a place where he can forage, which is a big part of his ability. So I'm going to use this action from the checkmates to move Rusty. One, two, put him in the mall district. We're going to use, we already did that. So I have three more actions. I think I need to get the checkmates out of there. They're just kind of sitting ducks. I'm going to use an action there. They're going to move three. One, two, three. Yeah, there's no point putting them in the campground. I'm going to use another action and two supplies to put a barricade here. 
She liked that idea a lot. And then we're going to forge with Rusty now that he's in a name space. He rolls a five, so we get two supplies. So I still only have one bullet. All right, housekeeping. This is going to all refresh. Now, I do need to worry about chaos, right? Oh, that should have a chaos token. I forgot to put that there. So I only have five left. That's one, two, three, four that are just totally unprotected. Um, and if I move a Toro Loco, that's five, right? So you're, you're seeing how uh, chaos tokens, I was in a great place for a while, and now it's like, oh, that could be bad. Now there are, if I can get the Raiders or the Rangers, they can really help clear out, but I just haven't picked those events yet, but hopefully that changes now. No, <laughs> it does not. Uh, I think the, the Rangers are a chapter two card and the Raiders are a chapter three card. So, and uh, again, there's no guarantee you're getting either of them. So right beneath our feet for our Raiders, Rangers, refugees, I can move the refugees one, sure, and rescuers. Nope, I can't move the rescuers, it's a zero, sorry about that, and rescuers. Uh, infection phase, I'm going to roll, I need higher than an eight, I rolled a six. Eight goes down to two, we have ourselves an outbreak, we're putting a, oh, hello, that's the, Big card I want to see. So on a highway, we're putting a new Zed unit. Uh, it's going to be in the closest town. Now it's going to be the closest town or the closest, closest chaos space. Now that we have more chaos around, it's going to start to matter. There's no chaos on the highway, so it's going to be the closest town. Uh, so it's going to be on Ingeberg. Now, uh, immediately triggers hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, now it's not, it didn't move into there, so I, I don't know. Does that count as moving into there for a defensive perimeter? I think it does. Yeah. So the rules, the defensive perimeter applies. So I'd be putting this here. It's another reason to put that defensive perimeter right by Ingerberg. Um, so I'm going to roll a, if I roll a five or a six. Yes. Uh, so I rolled a five or a six for once. Now I gotta figure out what the heck, what the heck that does. Ah. Um, so uh, we'll force a unit to be placed or retreated one space closer to the source space. All right, cool. So it didn't trigger that that hand to hand. Although I might have wanted to do that. No, that's fine. So that's going to be pushed back here as a little bit of a Zed's mob, and we're good because I had the horse. It wouldn't have been whatever, but that's fine. I I, I like to keep it, keep things far, keep them far away. All right, so that was the infection base. Eat zero. Zed's phase. At the beginning of this phase, make a fate draw. We get BAM! Where? Suburbs. Oh, interesting. So I'm gonna remember to do the plot twist in a second. So make a fate draw. Select any civilians or hero unit on the faded track, but not in Star Space or Town Center. I do not have one. So none of that applies, which is really awesome because it basically you do an attack, infection level goes up, and then you just suffer damage. But this is not a civilian, that's a villager, and that's not a civilian, that is a refugee. So now we do the plot twist. The bridge is collapsed. It's a cool little token. So I can spend an action to like get a ferry, but then when I want to move through there, I actually have to like stop and then move again as I'm taking the ferry. If I had Bob Bowers construction team, I could spend an action to, to fix the, the, the bridge, um, which is pretty cool too. Um, but it doesn't affect Zed's units. It can go right through the bridge. So um, again, cool, cool little thing that is uh that happens all right so i do have to activate all the tracks you sh that's great so this dead's mob is going to activate into here we have defensive parameter oh can never roll it if i fight this no i'm not fighting this no, so run, flicker, run. I'm going to uh, to retreat instead of being attacked by a level 10. I do not want those guys to be injured. Now, there's a cool thing about the... Uh, the uh, So this gets a, a thing. Um, you know, the, one of the things about the horse is, like, again, normally, the, again, the player unit limit is two, but the horse and the rider counts as one for the purposes of stacking, so that's a nice little benefit there, too. Uh, this unit moves there. We get another chaos token. So we're not only down to three in our little handy dandy lid here. And then the mountain track activates. We get another chaos token on the board. So you can see how we're down, down to 
two. <laughs> so you're like, all right, that would be one. That would be another one. I don't have much wiggle room here. I do need to try to restore some order. So we get to the action phase. Uh, we are, again, we're done with the Z phase. Action phase is two. Checkmates roll. Oh, they, they roll the two. They don't get it. All right. Play during the phase to place a new available unit of your choice on any above ground start space. So it has to go into start space, which is very kind of limiting as to what you might want to do with it. But, but, um, there's some really, there's some, uh, Hmm. This might be a time just to take some bouncing Betty out and uh, try to see if she can't restore any order. Bouncing Betty is amazing. Yep, I'm going to put Bouncing Betty on the start space. All right, so Betty's going to come in. Um, wait, let me get her. I'm just talking about her so much. Her ears are ringing. Oh, no. Earthquake in Farmingdale. All right. Uh, we are going to put her, so the weird thing is, is so Zeds always retreat toward the, um, their start space and she basically follows Zeds wherever they go. Right. So if I, if I come and this is like from looking some board, board game FAQs. So Betty's ability for don't know, cause she is again, an expansion character. Um, she does an attack. Now she generally is good for one or two good attacks. And then you just better hope you get lucky in the saving roll because if you don't, she's gone. Um, she can come and do one or two good attacks. Um, and, and normally if there's a Zed in the next available space that she will keep moving. So basically she will keep moving toward the start space to kind of chase the Zeds away. She won't, if she goes here and with this attack, she's not going to go then go there. She's going to go back this way. So it's kind of a waste to use her here. I kind of like what I have going on there. Um, it might not be crazy to use her here, but if I use her here, I can almost assuredly restore a little bit of order. So I'm going to put her at the stat start space there. A hero arrives and let's see how heroic she can be. So Betty is pretty nuts because when she's healthy, she always does combat hand-to-hand -hand combat at plus three at times three. And when she's not healthy, she always does hand-to-hand -hand combat at times two. So hopefully we get two really strong rules and her ability. So it says heedless when she wins any hand-to-hand -hand combat against Zeds, she moves into the next base. If it contains any Zeds units, she doesn't move. It's not like brains where they move. If they won, uh, she only moves. If there is a new Zeds unit to, 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 uh, to fight. Uh, she cannot enter start spaces this way. So if she drives the Zeds all the way back to the start that she's like just stuck on like six street or six interstate or, or route six, whatever. So I'm going to use this action. I already uh, flipped that. So one, two, three, and, and she ignores chaos tokens. So she has a lot of nice functionality here. Infection level rises. She's fighting at a times three and that's some, you might want to like use her against a mob but i i, I kind of like what i have going on right here and i don't want to start bringing anybody to worry about the suburbs track if i can kind of like cordon this off and not worry about the chaos tokens here it will really help the math on the rest of the board so what i roll i roll the 10 so that's three damage that backs this unit up she follows because she's a maniac this infection level goes up i would love a five or better i rolled an eight good three damage none to her she totally survives this sucker is dead and uh she will actually restore order at the end of this turn which is exactly what i was hoping for uh in, in choosing that space great and now that she's still alive she can restore order there and she could do a bunch of cool things i am going to use an action to fix that put a ferry there because why not One, two, three, four. that's fine and then I will do Sheriff Hunt's leadership. Sheriff Hunt's leadership will send these guys out here. And I think I want another, do I want another barricade? Nah, what's the point of sending them there? I don't know. I have very few refugees in there. So the checkmates might not be that strong by the end of this after all, but those extra actions they gave me earlier were amazing. Amazing.
I'm going to use Severson's ability to send these guys here to help out the checkmates in case it comes to that. I'm going to use Thoroughbred to get... Thoroughbred, where do you want to go? No, it's got damage. It's fine. I'll just do a... Uh, use this action. I'll do a scavenging or foraging action with Rusty. It's a one, but we get a supply. Yeah, I think we just need to see what the next uh, couple of event cards are and hope for the best. So, restoring order. Infection level goes up. Thank you, Betty. Flipping these. Yeah, I want to keep the horse with... Um, actually, I'm going to probably put the horse... I'll put Kingman on the horse for now. Because I am going to defend with him first. And the, that does... Nah, it doesn't change. It does make the bath better if I do that. Cool. Uh, this is going to go away. Next card, we think we're in chapter three. We are. Ooh, the Raiders. Ha! Ha! Raiders. I don't mind this at all. This could actually work out well. So, 4R. Um, again, Raiders. Oh, so at the beginning, before we even get there, at the beginning of this phase, place the Raiders in play. So, we, we just never got the Rangers. Uh, and they're going to be in a star space on the above ground track with the most chaos. So we have three chaos there. That is the most chaos. So they're going to go in the forest. And then I'll just take this, this out. Put this here. So the, uh, they, um, they, 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 get, they attack everything. They also restore order. They do a lot of things. They, are, they would attack player units. They would attack uh, Zed's units. The crazy thing is so they're like player units when they're fighting Zed's, but they're Zed's units otherwise. So like they wouldn't be stopped by chaos, but they will restore order if they're there at the end of the turn. So this is, a, if they keep moving, they would be able to get rid of two of these chaos tokens, which is super nice. Um, so at the beginning of this phase, so Raiders are first. Again, we don't know where the Rangers, they weren't in this game. Refugees. We can move one of our three fleeing refugees. We'll move this guy because he wants a ferry ride. Why not? And then rescuer is not on the board yet. Again, I didn't want to move this guy in because I didn't want to increase the infection rate, which is every time a refugee goes to the camp, you do increase the infection rate, which is a little nuts. So if you actually heal a refugee in a hospital, like you lose, you, you move it, but then you move it back when it goes to the camp. It's funny all right we are gonna do a roll i need a six or better i rolled a 10 eat i need a zero or better i think we got that covered zeds are activating on the suburbs so we get a zeds unit in the start space because there are no units thanks to betty 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 rubble and then we get uh we activate on the uh forest bam and bam okay how do I want to do this? Hmm. You get one event action. I'm going to roll for checkmates. Oh, a two. Don't show off. We get another one. Nice. I might try to push that guy back. Yeah. That track's trying to worry me a little bit. I mean, this isn't great either, but... Yeah, we've had no unchecked outbreaks, so no super Z. Oh, yeah, no super Zs, which is nuts. Which is nuts. So the, so the Raiders will keep going. If they ever get to Town Center, you lose half of your supplies and half of your ammo. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You lose, uh, not by my bad. You lose your ammo and supplies equal to how much life they have left. And they start with, um, they start with, with uh, it, it's strength value. So it's strength value is six. And if it was on the other side, so not how much life. It's strength value. So either six or three, depending on what side they're on. What side are you on? All right. Betty's going to have to stay here and just kind of handle the suburbs track for a little bit. How do I feel about chaos tokens? I feel okay about them now, actually. I wonder if I shoot. I have, I have this last this last bullet that I'm just kind of sitting on. Just so crazy. Yeah, I never got like the well-armed civilians or the uh, civilian leaders. So now, really... Shoot. So now really is kind of the question of how I want to make this happen. Thinking about potentially just jumping these guys here, pushing them back one. It'll give the defensive parameter more opportunities to work. Uh, but if I fail, that's going to be a, a pretty... Oh, the horse is there. Let's do that. Screw Let's gamble. So I'm going to... Do this action to jump into here. Since he jumps, I can roll four, five, or six. I rolled a five. Nice. So they back up 
he's now stuck there because of the chaos token but they day back up and take one damage which i'll put on the six so that's that makes this track a lot better um i'm going to move i'm really not worried about that chaos token having three here makes me feel good feel good i'm gonna move the use the checkmates action i'm gonna move here i'm gonna use leadership to move these guys back to the mall district when you thoroughbred to go one two three four five six and uh I'm going to use a, I mean, I don't, you know, what foraging is going to do for me. I don't know what foraging is going to do for me. Not a whole lot. I'm trying to, there's like no good place to even put Rusty in position to, to make a gunfire attack right now. This is pretty nuts. Sometimes when you're in control of this game, it's like, it's eerie because you're like waiting for the other foot to drop. I will do a forage action because why not? I rolled a six. That's why. <laughs> Let's not focus on why not. Let's focus on why. Yeah, cool. I've been rolling pretty garbage, so that was kind of due for that one, I think, with the foraging, but maybe not. Um, we're going to now do uh, housekeeping. Those all refresh, and then this goes away, and we pull the next, another Chapter 3 card. And remember, Chapter 3 cards, there are six that are regular. There are um, two that are brains events. And then about uh, a little bit through... Uh, this uh, about halfway through we're gonna we're gonna run into the uh, the uh, National Guard card, which is awesome So my next question uh, Raiders are gonna move Rangers aren't or didn't come into play refugees. We're going to Move one because it allows us to move one. I will move this one uh, Whatever I'll move this one. Let's try to get a couple in at some point point. And then we will uh, do rescuers, not on the board yet. We're going to do a infection. No, eat zero. All right, at the beginning of this phase, check the mind space. Any units there suffer one hit and immediately retreat. So this suffers a hit. Now it can't retreat there because you have a mob. So the stacking limit applies, it goes there. But now we have a no entry marker, no one can enter the mind space. So I guess if you were like just hanging out in the mind space to try to continue to, you know, get a pipeline of ammo, um, which would be really smart, but it's something, it's a strategy I've never actually been able to pull off, then that would actually make a big difference. Uh, event actions, there are two checkmates rolls. It's a one, so I don't get that extra action, unfortunately. So now we're gonna go, and what shall we do? All right, I'm gonna use the leadership ability to uh, do a foraging action with the civilians unit on the mall district. And we rolled a two. That was useful. Um, I'm going to um, yeah, it's like I'm just I feel oddly in control. I think there's might as well just start doing some free ammo shots, right? Like it makes some sense. So I'm gonna use thoroughbred to move Rusty here. Uh, we're going to use an action. He's got a free gunfire attack of a four. He rolls a seven. That's two damage. That does flip this dude. That's fine. Uh, we have one more action, which I will use to... Still not worried about chaos, especially because the raiders are going to start to restore some order for us. We'll get two back from them. I'm uh, going to... I could start... Yeah, I don't want them with the refugees in too quick. I don't want to force outbreaks if I don't have to. Oh, this restored. I didn't have to roll for for chaos, for infection anyway. Sorry, that should have been in the housekeeping last turn. Yeah, now I'm really not worried about chaos. Um, what am I doing with my last action? I don't know. So Rusty's not in the namespace anymore. I mean, I... I could set up another barrier, but I don't think they're going to pass that stronghold. I am worried about this a little bit. A little bit. All right, let's do a move action. We'll get Rusty here. 
because if, if we did a if there was a, an outbreak and we again the closest town to town center would be Beauville so that could really kind of open up a, 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 a line I mean I'm at the point now where I could just min max so much which is crazy so like six one two three four five we are chilling that yeah and I'll use I never use this player action I'll use a player action and two supplies to milk a barrier there and the horses like will get me around. I can do a free gunfire, come back. I mean, it's just nuts. So I'm going to do some housekeeping. We don't restore order at all this time. This goes away. The no entry can go away. Event card. I mean, that's it. Just totally backed them up there, which is nice. All right, brains conduct this special turn only. Great infection goes up one. All tracks activate with each Zed's unit advancing one space. However, if a Zed unit activation results in the combat that it wins, it immediately advances again. Repeat as necessary. Make sure, yep, yeah, that's fine. Um, great. So activating the suburbs track, that goes there. Activating the forest track, it comes here. Uh, infection level goes up. It is a uh, human advantage because Sheriff Hunt is a five to a four. And then plus two, it's human times three because of the barricade. I roll, it's a two. We're gonna do his martial arts ability. He gets a reroll, it's a four. Wow, I, I did a three, three earlier, right? <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, four, so two damage and backs up. One damage to Sheriff Hunt, but is he, how tough is he? He's very tough. Rolls a four there, so at least that's been coming in handy. Um, we're gonna act. So that was a win for me. This activates the seven will move. The four remains, and then that's it. And now we're activating the mountain track. So that look, that mine thing was nice because it it really kind of again gave us another round on the mountain track. I'm not sure if I said that already or not. It felt like a something I might have said already. And now we just have to activate the highway track. This comes in defensive perimeter. No, come on, defensive perimeter. You're awful. <laughs> All right, so this goes up. We're attacking El Toro Loco. Uh, it is a 10 to a 6, which is Zed's advantage. The terrain shift makes it a equal to, which, so big roll, big roll, big roll, please. Nine, that's better. Two damage. This one flips. One damage to El Toro Loco. But remember, uh, he is not like other... Uh, other mere mortals, he has a thing where um, he uh, sorry, he has a, a thing where he um, he's like a civilian. Yeah, and that was only uh, two damage, so there was already one on there. It just flips. I take that marker off. Cool. So that was it. That was a great brains event. <laughs> Bring it on. Next event. Done. Tough Zeds. Ugh. I hate the tough Zed. They have ruined more than one game for me. All right, four. Raiders are going to move here. Yes, some restoring order at the end of the turn. Uh, Raiders, Rangers, Refugees, one. Mm, I'm probably going to have an outbreak anyway. I'm probably having an outbreak anyway. Fine. They're going to go into the, the refugee camp and infection level goes up. Uh, now in and rescuers not on the board yet. I think they're the next card. Uh, we are now in the affection phase. I need a 10, 11 or a 12. I roll the seven. So this 10 goes down to a three. We draw a fate card. We have to put a, Ooh, yeah, they fell for it this time. That's a great event card. We have to put a Z unit in the forest. Forest track is here. So it's going to go in the, it's not going to go in the town. like it used to, it's going to go in the, in the, space with a chaos token close to the town center which is here cool all right and then uh we can hold this for later say play during the set phase to cancel any one dead movement that's really nice what are we doing now uh at the beginning of this oh so that was the affection phase eat phase we have to eat one supply manja manja and then we go to the uh zed's phase the zeds are at the beginning of this phase place a new zed unit on the mountain track start space Place a tough marker on the strongest Z, regular Zed's unit in play. And that just basically lets it cancel. Um, you have to roll a four or five, or you have to hit the thing and then do a four, five, or six to uh, to have the damage stick. The toughest Zed's unit in play is a seven. This guy. So that's not totally ideal. But 
that's what we will have to deal with. All right, activating the mountain track twice. That's one, bing, bing, and two, bing, bing. That gets a chaos marker. Okay, so we have three event actions rolling because of checkmates. I rolled a two, didn't get that action again. Uh, but they are plus one now because we do have a thing in the refugee camp. Uh, yeah, what makes sense? What makes sense? I mean, I'm still at plus three against those guys. But again, I'm assuming we have terrain shifts. The tough is, is tempting, but the way they cancel is super annoying. This will be nice for when we need it. Still got the minefield over here. I mean, like everything is, it's a, uh, oh! All right, last round, I would have had to enter. And I would have had to do another action. So I kind of cheated. Right, so when I moved in here with the horse, uh, I moved all the way here and then built the barricade. This time, so I, I instead of doing that double action last time, so now I would have, I would have just done move, move. This turn, I'll build the barricade using the supplies I spent last turn, if that makes sense. Because again, the, the stupid ferry, um, you have to stop there. Um, I might not have done that if I had remembered that, but that's fine. Uh, the thoroughbred makes it more reasonable. So last time, again, I did a move there and I built. So what I had to do was move and move. And then this turn I built and I already spent the, the supplies. I'm gonna use thoroughbred to bring this guy back. And this will basically be bouncing Betty's like, desperation home if she needs it and she's on the weak side i guess i don't know um yeah probably wasn't the greatest idea i'll do maybe i'll try to get these guys over there so i'll use leadership to go one two i will do a gunfire attack of a five with sheriff hunt he rolled a seven that's two damage that kills this unit can we get one on there? No, the tough unit canceled it, which again, that just happens all the time. I'm not even gonna waste ammo on that. So I only have one bullet left. Yeah, I think with these last two actions, yeah, I think I'm gonna use one action to to move this guy into the ferry. So then he can, and I'll move another, I mean, I can go anywhere I want with the horse next turn. So another action to go here. I'm just, it's not even scavenging and, the chance of me rolling a six it's, none of this is worth it like we're just kind of in good shape i can always cancel a move with this so that's fine so this goes away what do we get oh uh housekeeping this comes the raiders actually restore order so that goes up thank you raiders you're very kind what do we get oh it's not the national guard okay uh where are they coming from uh so four are raiders rangers uh so raiders are gonna move that triggers an attack. They attack everybody and they still move because it's it doesn't count as a player unit. So they will actually um, they will actually move and ignore chaos. All right, so the Raiders moved in. They're gonna fight the Zeds. Um, there's just, there's no defend. The, the Zeds don't get the uh, terrain shift, uh, but they're fighting like as if they're a player. So it is a six to a 10. So it is Zed's advantage. All right, so infection level does go up. It's a six to a 10. Uh, we are going to get big. Oh, four damage. Wow, the Raiders are dead. That is nuts. Uh, they don't do a saving roll. That is <laughs> absolutely insane. What just came? What just happened? All right, bye bye, Raiders. So they just don't restore that order, but that's fine. Um, yeah, it's it's totally fine. At least they're not fighting the player units on the way through, whatever. So that, that was crazy. So Raiders, Rangers, Refugees can move one. Bam. And Rescuers, not on the board yet. All right, Infection, no. E, uh, I need to roll higher than a one because I have one unit in the camp. I rolled a two, again, don't show off. Zeds, at the beginning of this phase, place a new Zed unit on every village space that the Zeds control. So the Zeds don't control either of the villages on the suburbs. They control St. Thomas, so that gets a new Zed unit. They do control Lefty Pass, so that gets a new Zed unit. And you can control either by, again, that was just a chaos marker. It's a chaos marker or a unit. But if there's a unit, there's a chaos marker. And they don't control Ingeberg. That's fine. Apply the second limit if necessary. Remove all of the hit markers 
from Zs. There's only two, which is really efficient. And now activate all tracks. Great. Activating the suburbs track. That goes up. Human times three, because Betty is a beast. She rolls a 10. Three damage. Oh, wait, wait. She wins. She goes to the next space because she's a beast. And that goes up to a seven. We roll. She rolls a six. That's three damage. This is dead, but she is now injured. But she doesn't mess around. All right. <laughs> so, done. Uh, and then we try to get, I might try to get her back because I, if we can heal her up, that would be great. Um, this isn't brains. So, uh, I'm, I'm pretty well defended here. I'm not going to mess around with this too much. So, uh, the tough Zeds come in. Infection level goes up. It is Zed's advantage. It becomes human advantage because of the barricade. Remember, we get to roll twice. So I roll, it's a six. Oh, man. Did I risk it? Yeah, let's risk it. Let's risk it. Martial arts. Oh, my God. It's a four. What just happened? So one damage. Can I cancel it? Uh, I mean, yeah, so it's tough to to cancel it again. Now, the barricade stays until he tries to leave. Three damage to me. Can I cancel it? That's one I cancel. That's two I cancel. And three. Great. So the Tough Zeds is going to cancel all their crap. At least I cancel all my crap too. That's a mess. Um, that's fine. That goes there. And that goes there. And now we have to activate on this track. This comes across. Man, martial arts failed me. <laughs> this goes up. Uh, it's human advantage because it's a four. I'm going to defend with the, the four civilians. It's a four to a three. And then the barricade makes it a human, a human times three. I rolled a three. What is happening? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so frustrating. All right. So two damage. They retreat one damage to the, the civilians. Uh, these guys can't advance. These guys do. And now we activate here. They come in. Defensive perimeter. Man, it's been garbage. <laughs> supposed to win a third of those. I think I did one out of seven. Um, it is a seven to a six. Becomes an equal to. This goes up. Come on, El Toro Loco. I rolled a nine. There we go. Someone rolls good. Um, so two damage to them. They retreat. And one damage to him, so he flips. Whoo! All right, one action. Checkmates rolls. They roll a six. We have another action from them. I don't know who I have that can win that. Yeah, I really want to push that guy back. Yeah, it's no good. It's really no good. And the terrain shift is only when you're defending. Mm. Mm 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 could try to one could try to go with bouncing Betty but that would be a that's kind of a, a mess for her let me get a Toro Loco out of here so player action one two three yeah, I think that's the move I'm gonna take this action go one two three and then the last action he's gonna jump in and try to push it back yeah so it's not a thing yet. Can I get a four, five, or six? Oh, two combat happens normally. It is a seven to a four. So it's Zed's advantage. An eight. Nice. Two damage. Now it's tough. Doesn't cancel that one. Doesn't cancel that one. That's what I'm talking about. Two damage there. Two damage to El Toro Loco. This guy just backs up all the way to there. Uh, and El Toro Loco in a very sacrificial move. What's he going to do? He takes two damage, so he has to do a saving roll. He does not get saved, but he did not die in vain. At least I hope not. So we have leadership. I'm going to use a leadership action to... Oh, I can't do anything. That's fine. Yeah, there's no there's no civilians near me. At all, Thunderbird, Thoroughbred. Yeah, let's let's make sure we save. Oh, the barrier is actually good. The Thoroughbred, I'll go to one, two, three, four, and get good old Rusty in position. Kind of figure out what I want to do with that though. 
All right. Uh, housekeeping. Uh, all the chaos markers stay. This goes away. Event card. Bam. National Guard arrives. Immediately make a fate draw. Fate draw says... Ooh, nice. It's another hold for later. So fate draw. So we have to put the National Guard unit on the faded track start space. The faded track is the most Zed's units. The most Zed's units are on the mountain. Because I can't kill those guys. So that goes. That's fine. We're good. Um, they may move... One space in a four-hour space, one space per move action, and it costs them two to fight. They have a 10 strength, so obviously uh, I don't have enough ammo to them to be fighting too much with ammo, but you know I could potentially move them along if I feel the need. All right, few, fewest said units play at the beginning of any phase or before any combat that places a civilian's leader marker on any regular civilian unit until it ends up in the cemetery. It has plus one shift in all hand-to-hand -hand and gunfire combat. Nice. Next, event card. Still in chapter three, in the dead of the night, four R. So raiders, dead. Rangers, never entered. Refugees, one. I can move these guys. And uh, rescuers, they move, one. I'm already right up here. Okay. Infection phase. Uh, we need a 12. <laughs> Don't think it's gonna happen. I rolled a two. Oh, that's awful, because that means another outbreak is right around the corner. So I'm putting a regular Zed unit. Oh! Nice, kill dozer. Play this card when a player unit begins a hand to fan uh, attack for two, uh, two terrain. So that's a that's the plot twist. I could put this regular Zed unit, uh, player's choice. I will put it on the forest track, and the reason why. Nah, I mean everything's backed up over there. I'll put it on the on the mountain track, and oh, it would go there to go. No, I don't want to do that. I'll put it on the forest track because it, it can't go here, so it has to back up to there. And that makes the most sense. Again, because the closest chaos unit would be the farm. Eat. I have one refugee in the camp, so I need more than a one. I roll a two. Again, don't show off. And now Zed's phase. The beginning of phase, plus one per Zed unit on the highway track. That's two. Add a new Zed unit in the, the start space of the highway track. And then activate uh, no terrain shifts this phase. Fine. We're activating this. Oh, that means we're not even getting the barricade. Yikes. Okay, so activating this. Defensive perimeter. Ah! <laughs> not once. The one. No, just just once. And then we're activating the forest. Um, this is going to come in. I am backing up with run, flicker, run. I, that just makes the most sense. This comes in as well. The lack of terrain shift that made that a no-brainer. And if they leave that space... I could have used far. No, I think that was the right move. That's fine. Uh, the nice thing about this card is it's four event actions. I'm going to roll with checkmates. It's a four, so I don't get the extra. But I'm kind of fine with that. Oh, she's going to be stuck there. All right, let me do a player action. I'm going to try to get Betty more involved. She might come in handy at the end of this. So that's... Fine. I'm going to put. It's already times three. I'm trying to see if there's any of my civilians units that that need upping. I mean, I, I moved down here, but again, this unit's now just wasted. That barricade's not doing anything. I'm not used to having one place that's just like so clean. So I spent that. I'm going to use. This action on the National Guard, they're going to move. Oh, it's going to be an unchecked outbreak. Yikes. When I restore order, it's going to be an unchecked outbreak. I don't want that. Because that could get really bad. I'm going to use my last bullet and do a gunfire attack five and uh, an action. Remember, I used that action just for the, the National Guard. I took that back. Um, so gunfire attack five. Let's try to cut down that Zed's mob in my barricade. So that's a five. So that's two damage. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna do a gunfire attack with Rusty. He's attacking at a four. Doesn't cost any ammo, which is good because I don't have any more ammo. Nine. Well, at least made it count. So that's uh, there's two damage on it. It goes. It flips. One damage. I can't. I, mean, I can't even do a hand to hand. I really don't want to. I really don't want an unchecked outbreak. But some of those super zeds can really ruin your life. 
I think I can't move with her because of the chaos token. Can't bring these in because that's going to be an outbreak. Man, I might get an outbreak. Nah, I should be all right. I'll do an action to get into here. I'm going to get rid of this to add the civilian's leader card to that guy. It's not going to do anything on the four where the four is. I'll do an action to get the civilian's leader into town center. And then I'll use leadership to do a forging action with that civilian leader. Oh, six. I'll take an ammo. That's nice. And then the thoroughbred will just leave where they are. Nope. Thoroughbred, I'm going to actually bring down here. One, two, three. They're going to go on the ferry. That makes more sense. All right. Uh, this is going to go infection level. We restore order. Flip, flip. And this goes away. Next card. Bam. Fast Zeds. All right, 4R, Raiders are dead, Rangers are dead, uh, Refugees, I'm gonna move this one, Rescuers are gonna go there. Roll, I'm gonna do, I need a 13. <laughs> I got, oh my gosh, I did a two again. That's amazing. All right, down to 10, Fate Draw. Oh, I'm getting good cards though. Most, most chaos, Clint Eastwood emerges from the shadows. A man with no name. Play this card at the beginning of any hand-to-hand -hand combat for a one-time plus three terrain shift. And that's going to go, we can put a regular Zeds in the place of the most chaos. That is the mountain track. So it would go here. It can't fit. It goes back to there. Okay. Wow. Well, that's not great. Okay. So... Uh, eat, I have one survivor or one refugee. I rolled a six. We're good there. Uh, now we go to Zed. So at the beginning of the phase, place a new Zed unit on the forest track start space. Place a fast mark on the strongest regular Zed unit in play. It's the nine over there, which is fine. So that moves, it will activate twice. So we'll try to move if it can't, then it's good. But if, if it can move, it can move twice. But it's pretty buried behind a pretty good bottleneck over there. Um, that's fine. Good. So we get two actions. Oh wait, my bad. The rest of the Zed unit. So I, I need to, I need to activate the forest track twice, which is really bad. I'm going to cancel the first move to try to bottleneck this a little bit. Barricade is getting destroyed. That is for sure. So I'm canceling the first move. So you can cancel one move per Zed's phase. So uh, activate, canceling that Zed's mob move. I'm going to roll this. I rolled a five. I get to keep this again for next turn. All right. Um, since I canceled that move, though, this heals and one damage goes away. Since that canceled, these guys can't move. This moves, this moves. Now the second activation is going to come through. It destroys the barricade. I'm going to guard with Sheriff Hunt. All right. It is a, oh, it's a Zed's advantage. It becomes a human advantage. Do I use, but if I prevent it, I really push it back with this. Um, infection level goes up. We're going to have another outbreak. I'm going to, we're just definitely have another outbreak. All right. I'm going to use a man with no name to get it up to Zed's human times three. I'm rolling. I rolled a seven. That's three damage. I'm going to just flip this one, back them up. The rest of the activation can't move. That can't move. That activates. All right, we get two event actions. I'm going to do the checkmates thing. I'm going to roll. I roll the six. I get another action. And now I think we got some good things going on. All right, I'm going to move with a player action. 
I'm going to move Betty here. I'm going to use a thoroughbred to move Betty. So one, two, three, move Betty to the hospital. Thoroughbred gets kicked back out. I'm going to use this action to heal Betty. This goes down. I'm going to use this free gunfire attack from Rusty. So it's a gunfire attack of a four. It's an eight, so I do two damage there and now kick her out here I'm gonna do an action with Betty she's going in hand-to-hand -hand combat we're probably gonna have unchecked outbreak it just is what it is so I'm doing a human times three I rolled a four, two damage, kills this guy. One damage on this guy, he backs up to there. This one's out. Betty's injured. So she's now fighting at a human times two. She comes in, infection level goes up again. She rolls a five, because I am just garbage right now. So two damage, I'm gonna try to weaken that thing at least. So there's the, the um, tough said, all right, I get one through, cancel the one, flips. They both back up. Betty suffers a damage. Betty does a saving roll. She does not get saved, and both of my heroes from afar have, uh, have not made it. <laughs> That's fine. But there's a reason why I picked them, and they're great. So I've really kind of pushed everything back there. I still have two really strong uh, event, uh, fate cards too, which is nice. But I lost my barricade here, which is obviously a concern. But I have probably my two strongest uh, units kind of holding force, holding down the fort there. And then I have a literal fort over here with Colonel Kingman. Um, so, all right, uh, we're going to do up housekeeping. This goes away. All right, unchecked outbreak with uh restoring order with the national guard so i have to roll these dice can i please stop rolling twos i'll roll the seven that's better than a two so six i do a fate draw and i put a super zeds uh now this is during the housekeeping phase so this is actually great so the if possible it's like two player units in the same space i cannot perform any further actions this turn well this is the housekeeping phase so that's not going to affect us at all uh, and I put a Super Zeds in the, where? In the highway, which is fine, because I got the Doom Zeds. They can't fit in Ingerberg, so they go back to there. Doom Zeds are pretty nasty. Again, they force you to retreat. We'll kind of see if I can keep this bottlenecked as we go. So the housekeeping phase is done. This goes here. I get a new event card. Bam, unidentified mob appears. All right, we are uh, about to be in chapter four. So uh, raiders, rangers, refugees, uh, it's refugees two. Oh, this is nuts. Wait, at the beginning of this phase, make a fate draw. So we do a fate draw. Um, the, the fate is actually six because I just did that on checked out breaks so this actually worked out really well so i'm going to place the, the vip survivors in the start space of the highway so the vip survivors are another special unit oh they're <laughs> toast they behave like refugees so they're not going to move where that is they're not going to go where chaos they, they can go where chaos is uh, they just can't go across the bridge. Now, if I somehow magically get them to town center, I get some benefits. Uh, I would not hold your breath on uh, on this uh, possibility. Cool. Now I do the raiders. I got it's another save for later. So doing fairly with the fake cards here. Didn't I get the, the disease spreader? Is like the worst. So I didn't get him, which is nice. So uh, raiders dead. Rangers um, uh, refugees two so both of these can go in here they both go here i get two more infection because of that uh, and then rescuers go here that causes an infection increase it is a 10 to a 14 so it's actually zed's advantage which is bananas uh, this would be a nice uh, 
if I could send that fast set back, I don't think it matters that much, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. I rolled it's a seven, Zed's advantage, so one damage to the Zeds, two damage to the National Guard unit, but they actually are like the Zeds in that they, they have a more than more than the normal amount of health. Alright, so that's fine. We are now going to the infection phase. Uh, I need to roll higher than a nine. I roll a nine. Exactly. Yikes. You see how that affection, that one infection here or there, if you get it wrong, it really changed a lot of things. Fate draw, putting a regular Zed's unit. Yikes. I actually isn't bad. So this is, uh, I put a regular Zed unit um, in the appropriate spot and the track with the most Zed units that is the uh, mountain track and it's going to have to back up to lefties pass. That triggers an attack with the National Guard. It is human advantage. It's 10 to 6. And then the terrain shift makes it, it makes it human times 2. I roll the 6 because I do that. 2 damage to the Zeds. And they retreat. 1 damage to the National Guard. So the National Guard flips. And then the plot shift. We get a regular Zed unit in the campground. But <laughs> this is nuts. Because what does that do? Well, stacking limit moves it back, moves it back. Then it goes there. It's another six. So infection goes up. It is a equal to human advantage because of the terrain shift. I rolled an eight. That's three damage. It backs up one damage to the National Guard. They've had a they've had a busy morning. <laughs> uh, that's done. Okay, so that was the infection phase. Eat, no. Zeds, activate on the mountain track. Okay, let's try this again. This comes over. Bing. It is human times three because it's a four to a three plus the barrier, uh, the barricade. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm rolling so bad. Uh, I'm going to do two damage to the one because I want to. I want to keep the other one alive. So I guess there's a there's a... A, uh, silver lining this guy is now injured though which isn't great uh everything else is blocked up except oh guess what <laughs> national guard gets pounded on again uh it is a 10 to a 6 it becomes equal to uh big money oh a 4 that's great uh national guard is dead they do do a saving roll i think we get a chaos marker here there were literally was four, three of those four uh, infection buffs were the National Guard, which is nuts. Um, saving roll. Sure, let's try to save the National Guard. Where is the National Guard? Ah, there's their card. Yes. They don't get saved. National Guard goes to the cemetery with Bouncing Betty, who honestly was more helpful <laughs> this game than that. All right. What is happening? So that was, I activated the mountain track. Highway track. Oh, man. I think I let them do it. That's fine. Because I'm still... I'm playing with this card here, but no, it's fine. They come in. Uh, defensive parameter. Oh, my God! <laughs> There's one five or six when I want it! It's crazy. All right, so they're coming in. First thing is first, they're going to get shot up by what's left of this mine. So they're going to get a gunfire attack of a four. It's a... F I rolled a four. I... I un... It's unbelievable how bad I'm rolling right now. All right. Infection level goes up. It is a seven to a three. So that would be Zed's times two. However, uh, it goes up to Zed's advantage because I've hunkered down. And then it goes up uh, three more because of my stronghold. So it's human times two. I rolled a five. It's crazy. All right. Two damage. This one's dead. This one gets one damage and retreats. One damage to... The colonel. Oh. No. That's a mistake. I'm going to do two damage to this one. And now these guys can't advance. Yeah, that makes more sense. That makes a lot more sense. Cool. They are bottlenecked. Awesome. So, done. Three event actions. Checkmates. What do you do? Great. Gives us a fourth rock on so i think we're yeah we're about to hit the uh the level four cards 
What am I worried about? Everything. Awesome. I'm going to use this player action to go here. I'm going to use this action and these to put a barricade up. It's a nice little three shift. It's a mini stronghold, I dare say. That's fine. I'm going to do this action to go one, two. Use Thurb. No, Thurb, I can only bring a hero. Oh, well, Checkmates is now a 4 2. So I'm not going to take that action back. Checkmates is a 4 because I got all those those units in there now. So this is almost they're just as. They're like the, the equivalent. Which is bananas. Um, the Suburbs track is clean. I mean, that's crazy. All right, I'm going to use the horse. One, two, three, four, five. For thoroughbred. Man, defensive parameter is not that any. <laughs> it's not that anything for me, man. That's so nuts. I think it was that, it was that one time, right? Still have a couple of bullets. No, I have one bullet. By a couple, I mean I have one. So the tough sets is still in play. That's still in play. That mountain's looking rough. I'm gonna use an action to get sheriff into here. I'm gonna use leadership to move this guy here. I'm gonna use an action to get them into here. And then we use a healing action to get this down and have another level four civilian, I guess. I mean, I don't know what else I'd be doing right now. So, uh, yeah, we still have plenty of chaos tokens. We're good. So housekeeping, we have this, we have that. Good. Uh, we're going to get rid of this. So the one thing I could be doing with equip ref refugees is like, I could, I could flip this, put that in the cemetery and put these guys in town center. But with the checkmates, it doesn't make any sense. Bam. All right. What the heck is that? So four are Raiders dead Rangers, never on the board refugees, no more on the board. Um, these guys are still defiant villagers, which is just doesn't seem possible. And, um, and the rescuers were uh, unable to rescue themselves. So that's that. So that's done. Uh, infection. No. Good. Eat. I uh, need to roll higher than a three. I rolled a five. That will do. I get higher than three. Cause, oh, higher than a four because of three and one. And then all Zeds. At the beginning of this phase, immediately raise this to 13. And we do an unchecked outbreak. So I really want to roll not a two. I rolled a seven. Okay, six. Fate draw. I'm putting a super Zed on the board. Where? Putting the super Zed on the board in the highway. The crazy thing about that is, again, it's going to back up all the way to the start space. Now, the VIP survivors, uh, who I probably won't get moving at all, and these are the ooze Zeds. They're kind of gross. They cause three infection instead of one. They can coexist on this highway track, and it just is what it is. All right, so place the infected vermin Sandy on the start space of the track where there are most Zed's units. So now we do have a disease spreader. Uh, I can take the National Guard card off the board because they're no longer an issue. And this will go here. And I'm going to put this reminder here because in case that gets off the start space, we need to increase the infection rate every infection phase. So that is done. That plot twist is over. Uh, Remove all hit markers from all Zed units. Well, I spaced them out. I'm still rather the strengths that they are and bottlenecking them. And I think that's not, it's not the worst decision I could have made. So that was a lot of damage to pull off, but it's still, I'd still rather have that than these guys closer, right? I mean, they're still only a strength of a three. Um, so that's fine. We're now activating every track, activating the suburbs track. There are no Zeds. So again, we have one Zeds here. Now you have to start worrying about chaos markers again, because if this moves up, it's chaos, 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 right? 
So um, it, it will come back to be an issue. So that activates. Activating the forest track. One, two, and three. Activating the... Uh, oh, do I want to cancel it? Do I want to cancel you? Now, I mean, I'm, I'm so good. But then they die, which is now it's fine. And they're going to come in here. Infection level is going to go up. I'm doing a, so that's a four because of the three refugees units. So a four is human advantage. The barricade makes it human times three. Can I please stop rolling garbage? Nine. Beautiful. Three damage. I'll kill this one. This one retreats. Everything else activates. So only the stronger ones are going to go forward. The weaker ones stay. And now the vermin's on the track, so that will be an infection every round. Uh, this guy... Man, do I dare do it? Yes! Come on! Defensive parameter! Yes! We're <laughs> it worked! Alright, good. Back. Done. Nothing else can move. Great. Okay, uh, event actions are two, checkmates, rolls, it's a three, we get another action there. This is cool. I'm going to do a heal action, this goes down, we have those guys at full strength now. You're just trying to do the math and how many activations are left, and it's really, it's really not much left to do. And again, this is a double move, but it can't. It just it, it evaluates at one at a time, so it moved once, and then the double move it couldn't because of the stacking limit. So it's it's not a bad idea to kind of keep a crowd in front of it. Yeah, I don't want to give up. I want to give up my position anyway, really. And I still have yeah, they fell for it this time, last time, and killed Dozer. Whoo! All right, I'm gonna do leadership. Send this guy here. We're going to do this action and two supplies and build another barricade. I mean, just in case. I mean, <laughs> it's nuts. Um, I have two more actions. Hunker down is too strong. The colonel might be on a suicide mission here. It's one of the reasons I want to get a backup. Kind of have that same situation. I have kind of a backup everywhere else. The tough, oh, I guess the toughs, yeah, the tough, the tough marker is so rough because you just, you don't want to waste so many actions that are just going to get canceled anyway. Um, I know I can cancel one movement because of, yeah, they fell for it this time. Two more actions though. I wish Betty was still alive. I miss Betty. I miss Betty. Like, I have two Super Zeds. They're both here. Do I have three Super No, two Super Zeds on the board. And then the Tough. And then the Fast. Right. Right, right. So, yeah, I don't want to kill too much in front of these guys. Because that, that's going to create a problem with that Fast Zeds. That could really be a little rough. Well, I'll use this action to go here. And then I'll use the last action to do a Gunfire Attack on a 4. Eight, two damage. Let's try to reduce that strength if I can next turn. All right. Housekeeping. This goes away. So we do have we have one brains card, three other events, and then the final card. What the heck's that smell for our raiders, rangers, refugees, rescuers? Done. Uh, infection phase. This goes up because of the, the vermin, the disease spreader. I need an eight or higher. I rolled an eight. Yes, don't show off. Eat two. No more supplies. Interesting. Now, at the end of this phase, oh, that could be interesting. Okay. Don't love that. But so I'm going to activate the highway track. Sure. Comes up. That goes uh, infection level. Nope, maybe not. Uh, we're going to roll. No, I don't cancel it. So that goes up. This does go up. No, it doesn't go up because I'm on a horse. So I'm making my mind. So that my strength is a three because of the horse. It's a seven to a three, which is Zeds times two. Without the horse, it would be Zeds times three. 
but hunkered down and then I have a triple shift because of the stronghold. This would be big seven. All right, three damage. This one is injured. They retreat one damage to me. Saving roll. No, Colonel Kingman has joined the ranks of the deceased. And now we have a very sad horse <laughs> without an owner. Um, the rest of these can't activate forward. Mountain track. I think I just canceled the mountain. Oh, the forest is going too, though. Ugh. Six to a eight to a three. Which one do I want to cancel? Yeah, I'm going to cancel the forest activation or the mountain activation. I roll a four, five, or six. I do. I get to keep this card for future use. And then the, uh, the so I cancel the mountain activation. The forest activation is going to go. This is going to come across hand to hand triggers with the civilians. It is an eight to a three, so that's times two. It is a well-armed civilian or civilian leader, so that goes up, and then the barrier makes it human advantage. And I rolled a six, so two damage. Flips, and one left, because it had two on it already. That backs up, and then two damage on our leaders. Okay, the rest of those guys can't move. So that is fine. So at the end of the phase, I choose a unit not in town center. I'm going to choose this unit because it has a barricade. So it's going to be normal hand to hand. So I pull a regular Zeds. Bam, it's a three. This goes up. It's a four to a three. So human advantage and then human times three. We do normal hand to hand combat. I rolled a four. God, I'm kidding me. <laughs> I'm rolling so bad, dude. All right, two damage and one damage to me. Now, since it survived, it flips to its full strength side, uh, retaining any hit markers, and that's fine. I mean, it's not fine. That's really bad, but. Ugh, that's just. How do I keep rolling fours? I mean, a five or higher, the sucker's dead. It's just, it's not good. Okay, uh, so now we do two event actions. I'm gonna roll for checkmates. I roll a four, so we get another action there. My my supply of heroes is dwindling. I'm gonna do stop Rusty's gunfire attack. That's an eight. I'm going to do two damage to this guy. So that attack will be a lot better. If the, because I'm just, again, I still got to wear that brains card. This jerk. I'm going to do, I want to flip that. I'm going to do the last bullet with the civilians. So the gunfire attack of a four. I just want a five or better. I rolled an eight, two damage. This one flips. That'll just make that a lot better. All right, so my last two actions. I already did my free gun attack with Rusty. I think I do this. I'm gonna move these guys here. I'm gonna use leadership to move them into the hospital, and then I'll use the last action to heal them. So they're back, at least on their three side. And that reduced the infection level. Thoroughbred. They come in times two. Yeah, the horse is kind of pointless right now. I might as well just try to see if they can win a battle. Fine. So everything uh, housekeeping. This goes away. Next event. Brains. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go now. All right, conduct this special turn only. We are going to raise this up twice. All tracks activate with each Zed unit advancing one space only. However, a Zed unit activation results in a combat that it wins and immediately advances again. This goes here. This goes here. This raises. 
it is human times three because rusty is a beast i rolled an 11 that's what i'm talking about that dude is dead this advances this advances i cancel the mountain track again this should have advanced last turn there's no stacking limit with the vermin all right so um canceling that activation i get the card back that is really nice so nothing can move there i mean this is still two away but again it's one at a time so it's stuck and then it can't get to me um so it's a, it's a pretty uh it's a pretty cool bottle and mech effect the, this would move forward again the vermin will keep moving the vermin don't care about your stacking limits and then here this goes in it is a three to a four so it's human advantage human times two this goes up Ooh, we are oh i can back up that's probably smarter yeah it's definitely probably smarter all right so we're doing human times three i rolled a five which is garbage but it's enough to kill this guy and then one damage to the civilians so they are injured this guy activates run flicker run he's just going to avoid no hand to hand since that does not count as a win the brains doesn't trigger the vips will stay right there so the refugees I, again I, every time i had a refugee move i don't think i've actually had one i could have these would count but obviously you don't move them into a space where there's a, a Z unit so that's why they're just kind of still chilling on the start space so that brains event is done so right now we have two events and then the final event so we'll see we'll see i kind of like where we're at but things can get bad so 4r uh raiders dead <laughs> rangers dead um no ranger raiders dead rangers never came out no more refugees and rescuers are dead Great. Well, these refugees are here, but they're kind of stuck. That, that we're going to have an outbreak. Awesome. So we are going to roll uh, for the infection phase. Oh, it's even worse. So the beginning of the phase, this goes up. That is an unchecked outbreak because of the friggin' vermin. So we roll four. We might have two outbreaks on one turn. Fate draw. Bam. Oh, two more actions. That's nice. Suburbs. So I get a Super Zeds in the suburbs in the closest town. This is what I was afraid was going to happen earlier. So we get the Leapers. They automatically destroy barricades. Awesome. These guys, these defiant villagers can become uh, fleeing refugees. And then we get a Chaos token there. Hold for later. Get two actions during a turn. Awesome. Adrenaline supply discovered. Great. Now we actually have to do the roll <laughs> that we were supposed to do before. That is at the beginning, right? Yeah. Um, so we're rolling. I need higher than a nine now. I rolled a nine. <laughs> Great. Fate draw. We're now we're doing a regular Zed unit in the forest. And it's going to go in the space close to the town center that has a chaos token. Uh, immediately suffer minus two supplies and minus one ammo. Well, I have none, neither of neither. So. I have none of neither. So <laughs> nice try. You suffer no damage. It's a uh, dud ammunition and spoiled supplies. That's right. That's why I have none because they're all spoiled. And now the infection rate is already down at zero, which is really nice. Actually, I might be able to avoid any more outbreaks. All right, eight zero, and uh, we're going to activate the mountain track. You know what I'm going to do? <laughs> uh, is this right? Yeah, cancel, cancel it, cancel it. So I have to roll um a six i keep this card for future use this is amazing all right uh this vermin those does, does come uh keep coming eat nothing all right I, well, i'm sorry mountain track highway track that eh, flick is gonna run these guys go here now remember the uh, stronghold stays it doesn't get destroyed like the other barriers but we'll see how far i can take this horse close i mean again i just need to survive the next two turns right so at the beginning of this phase, select one hero unit in play. That hero receives two uh, terrain shift in hand-to-hand -hand combat for this turn only. And what hero do I want to select? I'm not sure what I'm worried about. Doom guy sends you back no matter what. Fine, I'll get a plus two shift with the sheriff. Why, I mean, why not? Whatever. 
so I get uh, two event actions because of the checkmates. I roll. I do not get the extra one because I rolled a two. I'm going to play this during the action phase. Get two more events. Two more actions. I'm going to move the sheriff here uh, with a player action. I'm going to use leadership to heal this guy. That reduces the infection level, but the infection level is already zero. They can come into town center. Use this event to put them, this action to put them there. And then I think we just kind of clear out some space on the highway track. I mean, it'd be really unlucky for them to go three times there. I'm going to fire a bullet with Rusty. It doesn't take any ammo. Five, one damage. Uh, then we're going to go action. One, two, three, four. Infection level. Eh. Infection level goes up. It's a five to a four. So it's human advantage. And then human times two because of keep calm and kill Zed, the event. Uh, so it's, it's plus that. So it's that's cumulative. So it's a human times three overall. I roll a two. Martial arts. I get to re-roll. I kid you not. I just rolled a two again. <laughs> I have never seen anything like this. Like that's unbelievable. I still win. These guys retreat. Uh, tough, please. Uh, yeah, I cancel one. I do not cancel the other, so I'm injured. And uh, then I'm going to use my last action to go back on the horse and then use thoroughbred to go drop me off in the hospital. I, I mean, how do I, how do I just roll two twos? <laughs> Look, I mean, I don't, I don't understand. Um, fine. Yeah, I think the hospital is a good place for me. It's fine. Link for tough at least. So this goes here. We're going to refresh all these actions. Uh, no more housekeeping done. All right. Hospital efficiency. So, uh, four R. So again, Raiders, Raiders, Rangers, refugees. So two, I can't move there again. I can move this guy. Nice. And uh, rescuers are dead. I'm going to roll. Oh, never mind. The infection level is only one. Oh, the infection level does go up to two. Right. That's how I got the outbreak last time. So I'm just making sure I, I did the vermin last time, which I did. Uh, so I have to roll. Do I get a two? No, I don't. I think I'm good with twos for the day. Eat. I need a five or a six. I didn't. So I have, I, I rolled less than I have numbers here. So I have to take a damage. Um, I'll put the damage on, I'll put the damage on this, this, now I'll put the, do I want to take the damage on the horse? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get the damage to the horse. I know it's messed up. I'm sorry. I feel bad. Uh, <laughs> great. Zed, Zeds are activating on the suburbs. Bam, they're activating on the mountain. Canceling it because I can. I did not roll a four, five, or six this time. So that's the last time I canceled the activation with the vermin keeps on a coming. Great. And then they activate on the highway. Again, the stronghold stays. Boom. So now, during this phase, choose one. So I get two event actions. Uh, checkmates rolls. I get a five, so it's plus one there. Two free heal actions at the hospital with no decrease in infection. Or minus two infection level or minus one infection level and one free heal. I'll do minus one infection and one free heal. Great. That's nice. That's great. All right, let's... Um, oh, sh shoot. I, um, uh, I've been forgetting about chaos tokens. When the, oh, was it the, yeah, cause that just moved here. Okay. That just moved here. That just moved here. And, oh, see, I just added three. Wow. I just added three chaos tokens. Cause of course I did. Where else could chaos be added is totally on the, um, 
the highway, the suburbs track. I can't, if the next one's suburbs, I can't stop that. Oh, and when the Leaper jumped in here, he just destroyed the barricade. And you don't get to rain shifts. Right, I think that's what the Leaper does. My bad. Um, yeah, <laughs> when they jump in, they immediately strike. Because of course they do. So many little rules. All right, so great. I have four actions, and my number one goal right now is to make sure that this Leaper doesn't end up there. I feel like I can do... Again, there's no more brains events. I feel like I can deal with anything else. And these barricades are all in place. So like that's that's not gonna give me a, a chaos token. A double move there, but I'm still defended fairly good here and here. Um I have the kill dozer. I have a, a healthy sheriff. So can the kill dozer and the horse stack? <laughs> Probably not, right? It's probably self defeating. It's probably not the point. The horse is a horse is a horse, dude. Can't be on a kill dozer. All right, let's let's put the sheriff on the kill dozer, and let's send this dude back. Just get him away from there. So I'm going to move to the subway because the ferry is actually proving really annoying. I'm gonna hit play leadership to move the the re, the VIP the refugees along. I'm gonna use this action to go fight Killdozer. Uh, this goes up, so now it is human advantage. It becomes human times three, and I can roll twice, so I can roll two ones in a row. I roll the six. I I'll take it. Fine. So three damage to you. One damage to me. I feel fairly good about where I'm at now. I, it's crazy that another one chaos token, and like totally didn't even see that happening. Cause I play good. All right, let's try to hurt that dude. I'm gonna use an action, free gunfire because Rusty is awesome. I rolled a five, so just one damage. So I was trying to maybe knock that down to size a little bit. I have thoroughbred. Oh, well, maybe I'll give. I'll put. I'll use this last action. Because what is this? This is a four nine to a three with three terrain bombs, or nine to a four with two. So it'd be the same, right? So I'm gonna do this action. Go one, two, three, four, and then thoroughbred. I'm gonna go put Rusty on a horse. Or the Put the horse under Rusty. Cool. Let's do our uh, housekeeping. This goes there. Last card. Once and for all, a good night. All right. Here we go. Uh, 4R. We got um, Rangers, ref Rangers, Raider Raiders, Rangers, Refugees, Rescuers. Oh, Refugees. Boom. There. Oh, that goes up. Uh, which is cool, though. That's... That makes him a makes checkmates a five. Um, I need to, uh, this goes up because of the stupid vermin. I need higher than a four. I got a five again. Don't show off. I need higher than a four. I got a five again. Don't show off. Look at me. So the infection phase is done. Eat phase is done. Suburbs. Good. Glad I did what I did because the leapers come in. There's no terrain shift. This goes up. It is human advantage against the sheriff it is a nine that's awesome kill the leapers sheriff takes one damage uh saving roll i'll try to save you sheriff yeah he saved look at him he goes back to the hospital with an ekg meter awesome uh oh he's actually tough i forgot about the tough last time he didn't he wouldn't have saved himself last turn he would have saved himself this turn so he tough very tough. So he just takes the one damage and is not dead. All right. Um, now we can activate the mountain track. <laughs> That's nuts. So it's two for the vermin. So that, that two from the vermin still actually does add in. So that's a total of nine. Uh, infection level goes up. It's going... I'll, I'll have it attack Rusty. Come on, Rusty. Make something happen. So it's going to be... Infection level doesn't go up, actually, because I'm on a horse. <laughs> so we're going to... We're going to go 
Uh, nine to a five is a Zed's advantage, and then uh, plus two because of the barricade is human advantage. And what do we get? Twelve. Oh, <laughs> that's so nice. Where's that been all game? All right, so that's dead. Uh, that that flips and one damage. And these all go back. The rest of these guys cannot advance. They're stuck. And then the highway track advances twice. This is the first time. Boom. Oh, I never advanced this guy. That would have been a chaos marker. Sorry, but that... I was like, I knew I should have been at the zero. Uh, and then it advances again. Um, so the Doomsdays are interesting. They're always going to send me back, even if I win. Uh, right now it's an 11 to a 2. The barricade makes it a Zed's advantage. This will go up. Uh, I rolled a 6. Uh, so it's 1 damage to me. No, 1 damage to Zed's. 3 damage to me. I back up. Oh, I'm dead. Whatever. Not going to do a saving roll. Um, and they just chill. And that's that. Um, so the Dooms, even if I had won, say I rolled like a nine, the Doomsheads would have taken the damage, but still sent me back, right? It's kind of the opposite of the VFW. So uh, that is that. We, I guess I, well, I advanced those refugees instead of the VIP guys. Do they turn every turn? Uh, must move one space turn if possible during the four hour space. So they sh they should have moved because this guy was back here. So yeah, there it was never possible before because there were always uh, <laughs> there were always freaking sets. But that's it at the beginning of the action phase. Uh, you do a pressure event, which we don't do in a solo game, and then you have won. The melancholy mood left in the wake of your brute survival leaves quiet questions still unanswered. Interrupting your reflections comes a ray of sun bursting through the clouds and shining on a small untrampled patch of flowers cool send the horse over there so we'll eat those <laughs> eat those suckers man what a game dude i uh i love this game it's so interesting it's it's really really interesting it's got so much going on there's so many twists so many ways to lose so many things to go your way so many cards that like feel overpowered but then they kind of aren't um being able obviously what i rolled really well um with the uh, I don't know why the fake cards are upside down. I'm trying to think about what they did with them. Uh, I, I rolled really well uh, with the uh, where is it? The uh, yeah, they fell for it this time card. It's just a really, really cool card. Um, so yeah, things uh, things kind of went my way and then was able to kind of pull it off. Um, happy to, to get this monster of a game on the channel again. Uh, we'll be back and uh, I might have to figure out how to break these up a little bit different. Um, these are these are gonna be really long videos uh, for sure. But um, no, nah, it's, it's a good one. It's a great, great game. Got a really nice, nice feel and it's just hilarious and the moments it creates, it's just, it's really cool to, uh, to be able to, to kind of put it together on, on, on the videos and then kind of bring it to the channel. So, uh, we'll be back with level three. I assure you, we were, we're just going to level three. I literally have no idea, um, what is added. I know there's some research components and, um, there's, there's new characters and new cards and, and whatever, but I'm excited to get into it. We'll be back with two, three months from now. Uh, in the meantime, you can go on my Patreon page. I do have a schedule with everything that is upcoming. And uh, so you can check that out. There's a public post I put at the beginning of every month so you can kind of see what's coming up and uh, mark your calendar accordingly. Any questions, comments, epiphanies, rules I got wrong, mistakes, strategies that you think I should have tried, things I might be missing about this game, even though I love it so much, definitely please put that in the comment section below. I'd love to engage a lot more about this amazing game. And, and that's it. Until next time, happy gaming.